Broadcasting from their world headquarters in Texas, it's the Arcade Repair Tips Live Show. The show that discusses arcade repair, restoration, news, and more. Now, here are your hosts, Tim and Jonathan. Well, hello everyone and welcome to episode 78 of the Arcade Repair Tips live show for August 2023. My name is Jonathan Leung. I'm the producer, director, and editor here at the Arcade Repair Tips video series. And joining me today, as always, not here, but here, is Mr. Arcade Repair Tips himself, Tim Peterson. Tim, how are you? Hey, John. If I look this way, can you see me? I can. Am I looking at you? <laughs> yeah, well, you're not looking at me now. There we go. Okay, we got you here in the frame. So, uh, Tim, if you remember back in 2020, we did this a lot, but it's been a while since we've done yeah, this. Been a yeah, uh, so we've uh, we're having to do it remote because Tim had to go on a trip, and this was we had planned the live show for the next week because I was unavailable last week, and Tim unfortunately had to go out of town early, so that means we have to do the show remotely. But we're glad that we're here. I'm glad that Tim is still able to join us, even if it is remote, and I hope you guys will. Uh, who will be tolerant of some of the technical difficulties we may have. It's been a while, Tim, so I'm not sure if our whole setup is, is where it was initially, but I think we'll be in good shape. So, uh, But before we get started, Tim, as always, how are you doing, and uh, how's it going on your end? Now, if you want to tell the people where you are, that'd be good. I'm in Arcade yeah. Repair Tips headquarters here in Texas, but where are you located? I'm right now, I'm in Concord, California. I'm for pretty much in Silicon Valley. Okay, so, I mean, so... Uh, kind of in the heart of like google and google territory yeah. there i guess not very far okay okay sounds good well um obviously you're out there for your job this week how's it how have things been going and how is the temperature out there tim <laughs> i was just thinking it's it's hit a high of 87 today uh the wind is kind of cool so that was our high right i think about right now it's 3 30 in the afternoon here and it's uh the warmest it's been 87 uh, nothing like back in Texas right now, huh? Right. So uh, apparently, according to my tech devices, the temperature here right now is 105 degrees, Tim. So right. uh, be very thankful that you are not here at the moment, is what I would say. So, but uh, so, go ahead. Yeah, you know what they say: California is sunny and perfect weather. I see why people like to live here. I just don't know how they afford to do it. <laughs> Oh, for sure. And, you know, we have a lot of friends, Tim, that, that whole thing with Californians moving to Texas is true. We actually have made friends with some of these Californians. And, you know, that first summer is pretty brutal on a lot of them, we've heard. So uh, if you are a California here in Texas, uh, sorry about the weather. This is the way it is in the summertime. But uh, I can see, like you said, why people would rather be in California, especially this time of year. So, Yeah, for those who are watching in different parts of the country, if you live here, you're used to it. Maybe some states, but, uh, you know... Five dollars and nine cents is what I paid for gas. The cheapest I've seen is four dollars and sixty-eight cents a gallon. Golly, yeah, that's um, that's about a whole dollar thirty more than we're paying here in Texas right now, Tim. Yeah, easily. Yeah. Well, we're glad that you're safe. We're glad that you're out there in California, and it sounds like you're having a pretty good time. As for me, I'm still here in Texas. Now, last week I was not here. Uh, we were out of, the, out of the country actually traveling, Tim, which was fun. But we can talk about that more in the after show. But before we get on to all of that, we do want to remind you guys that you can interact with us during the show by leaving your comments in the live chat room. Tim, we've got a little bit of action in there already. Um, Jumping General Series says, hey, guys. The Real Hammer Billy Lee is here. He says, hey, hey. Uh, let's see, Slayer768 says, what's up, everyone? Robbie J, say hi, Tim. Hi, Jonathan. Uh, and Nate actually has some questions here, Tim, so let's go ahead and okay. see if we can address those. Uh, Nate says, I have a Hydro Thunder that was freezing from time to time. I bought a brand new power supply and switched it out. However, I may have fried it as I believe I put the pin connector with the most pins backwards. So I switched it back to the old power supply and it boots back up and can hear the fans. However, the video signal, uh, however, no video signal, and it does not sound like it's playing blind as well. So Tim, Nate's got this Hydro Thunder. What do you think's going on? It sounds like it was kind of working before, had some reboot issues. New power supply may have plugged in the connector backwards. And now now we're, we're getting no video signal. We can hear the game playing, yeah. but again, no video signal. Right. Well, he's probably right. When you, you know, the 5 and the 12 volts, although they're not much voltage, you definitely don't want them to go to an area that's not. You also don't want to ground certain areas. So if he were to plug it in backwards, I'm sure it sent uh, power straight back to the board. The fortunate thing about that, though, is, John, it probably 
uh, damage whatever the first circuit was. Uh, so maybe he can, but I know those boards a lot of times are uh, surface mounted and they're really hard to work on. But maybe he might get lucky if it took out something uh, before that. I would definitely um, look into the where uh, the power comes in from the 5 and the 12. What's the first thing on the board that he sees? And maybe it's just something that he could replace or fix. But he may have to get his board sent off for repair or get another replacement board. Now, if I remember correctly, Tim, I believe Hydro Thunder has a separate video card that may use the, it may be one of those older Voodoo style cards, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And so um, there, there's there been some work done with some of the guys um, making backwards compatible video cards for that, Nate. So you may look into that. It may be a video card issue here. You may have damaged it whenever you plugged in the power supply backwards. Um, but you also want to kind of eliminate whether or not your monitor. So one of the things Tim will mention a lot of times is that if the monitor comes on, you can try turning the brightness up a lot and see if you get at least a white screen on the monitor. If we're not getting a white screen on the monitor, then more than likely we may have an issue with the monitor itself instead of the video card. So, I mean, that's something to think about. You may want to make sure just as a way to to know if the problem is in the monitor or the video card, right, Tim? Correct. Yeah, so that may be something that you want to consider. But at this point, we do need to figure it out. It does sound like the board, it's playing blind. And typically when we think playing blind, Tim, we think monitor issue. But again, these video cards are very finicky on these Midway style games with 3D graphics. And so it's very possible that that's, that's the case that's having problems. But there, like I said, there has been some, some work done on making other cards backwards compatible with those board sets. And so you can do, uh, if you do a little research... Uh, you can probably find those posts, or if you need help finding those, please let us know. Send, send us an email at questions at arcaderepairtips.com. But uh, for the most part, though, let's see if we can figure out if it's a monitor or, board or a board issue. Uh, try turning up the brightness on that monitor and see if you get a white screen from there. Uh, let's Johnson, see. Uh, I didn't hear you say that it was playing blind. It is. If that's the case, you're probably right. It's probably the video card. Yeah, it, it, it's it's. He says it does not sound like it's playing blind as well. Oh, is what okay. he says. So I mean, uh, again though, we do still want to see if the monitor is working. So if you can turn up the brightness, that would at least tell us if we do have a board issue. If it's not playing blind at all though, like Tim mentioned, then it may it may you may have damaged the board set when you went to plug it in backwards. And so if that's the case, um, you'll have to probably send it off for repair. There are several. There are some people that work on those boards. I'm pretty sure Tim that. Um, El Dorado Games works on those uh, midway boards, and there are a couple other repair guys that do as well. So, I mean, if you want to get it looked at, you could do that, send it off to El Dorado and see. If you're not getting anything after plugging in the power supply backwards, it may be, may be a good idea to do that. Uh, he says he's using an LCD monitor with the VGA, uh, and the monitor just says no VGA signal. So the fact that it says no VGA single signal means it's probably working. Of course, if you want to hook up a computer to it just to make sure that that's the case, you may want to. But yeah, it's kind of sounding like you may have fried your board at this point, right, Tim? Correct. Yeah, probably more than a video card if you're not getting sound as well. So um, you should be getting something on boot up. Typically, um, you know, uh, Hydro Thunder has that boot up screen. So if you're not even getting the boot up screen, uh, you want to make sure that the whole system is coming on at least and that you may be getting some power. But again, if you sent bad voltage to the board, you may have blown some stuff up. So again, maybe a bad board issue. And at that point, it may just be a good idea to send it off for repair. And we have other people we recommend, of course, on our resources page at arcaderepairtips.com slash resources. Uh, let's see. Nate says, do you know where I can buy a new PCB? Um, so as far as buying a new PCB for this, uh, you know, finding replacement Hydro Thunder PCBs is going to be tough. Uh, your best bet would be to probably get the one that you have repaired. Uh, if you want to find a replacement, though, you could try eBay or like uh, KLOV or some places like that and just ask around. It's going to have to be something that's, you know, obviously out of a pulled cabinet. And there may be some things out there like that. But I don't, I don't think they're making any repro PCBs. You may be, I don't know if it's fully compatible, but you may be able to go with like an H2 overdrive style board as well. But um, for the most part, for the most part, you'll probably get, the, your best bet will probably be to get your board repaired. What do you think, Tim? That's exactly right. There you go. So, uh, yeah. So I think that's where we're at. Sorry, Nate. Uh, you know, you always have to be careful. I, we've done the exact same thing before, Tim. I am guilty. I blew up a Johnny Nero action uh, hero board by hooking up the 24 volts line on a power supply accidentally. I mean, I think we've all blown up boards before. Uh, it really stinks now, though, because boards have become so rare that it's really hard to get get additional ones, right? Correct. So, okay. Well, I uh, and the last comment we have here is YouTube Punk. He says, lurking but listening. 
So there you go. So thank you for being here, everybody. We're so happy that you're here, and we hope that we have a great show tonight. We do have a lot of questions and things lined up for you. But before we get into questions, we actually have an update from our last show, Tim, from Lynn. And I don't know if you remember Lynn's question, but it was about a world-class bowling deluxe. So let me go ahead and put this up here so we can show everybody. Uh, here's the update from Lynn. Thanks for the information you provide on, on the live show on my World Class Bowling Deluxe game. The issue was the game board. I found a used one online. The game is up and running. Again, thanks, Lynn. So, and you can see the original question there, Tim, but the problem was that she was getting a status bad system code error whenever she booted the game. And so we told her you could check the power supply, but really at this point, it's probably a bad board. And it sounds like once she did the replacement, she was up and running. And the good news for Lynn was that the world-class bowling ga uh, game boards are not really that expensive, right, Tim? No, they're just a fun game to play, though. And it's very they're very plentiful, too, uh, compared to a lot of games. So, I mean, you should... Though, that's fortunately a game that you can find a replacement for, board for pretty easily. Uh, so, uh, we're glad that you were able to find that, Lynn. And we're glad that you got your game up and running. Uh, we always love the updates, Tim. We don't always get updates back from people letting us know whether or not, you know, what we said or did, um, you know, actually fixed their issue. But we're always glad when we do get those back and when they tell us what happened. So, that way we can kind of, uh, you know, we can obviously tell the audience here. And we can also record that for posterity if people have the same issue. So, uh, Lynn, we're glad that you got, you got your game back up and running. And we hope that you enjoy many years of world-class bowling deluxe games. So, well, Tim, with that update out of the way, let's go ahead and move to our first question. And this one is from Russ. And Russ says, hi, I recently found a Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition Hyper Turbo Cabinet at the local landfill and saved it by bringing it home. It appears to be a repurposed Joust cabinet that's been wired for JAMA. It powers on, a track mode chooses M. Bison vs. Saget with the India stage and it plays fine. On the next character select, it reboots. When, when trying to play, it lets me choose M. Bison and Saget and it plays fine on the India stage but any other character combo or stage causes it to reboot. Any suggestions on where to start troubleshooting this? I'd really love to have a functional Street Fighter 2 cabinet. So Tim, I always love hearing stories about people pulling games out of landfills. This is pretty awesome. It's always great when you can get a free game. And we'll be talking about more free games here um, in the discussion section. I don't know if you saw the story about the Environmental Disc of Tron, Tim, but we're going to be talking about that yes. here later in the show. But here's Russ, who went to his local landfill and boom, found a Street Fighter 2 arcade cabinet. Now, obviously, it's got some problems. The game does boot up and kind of work, but if he selects any combination of, of characters besides M. Bison, Saget, and the India stage, it sounds like it gives a reboot. So, Tim, with that in mind, what do you think Russ needs to do in order to get this Street Fighter 2 fully working? Well, we always start at power. So, we want to make sure that its voltage is correct. Uh, it could be as game board, but we, we want to make sure that the voltage is dialed in. The plus 5 and the plus 12, making sure that plus 5 is within 5.05 .05 to 5.1. And the 12 is as close to 12 also as we can get it. Um, if his voltage is good, then he probably has a game board issue. But I would a lot of times when we see that rebooting or at a certain stage when the game, uh, you could probably articulate this a little better, John, then, but it, as it requires more processing, it's not able to because it's not getting enough voltage to do it. And so that would be my first uh, suspect here but he could have a damaged part on his board that also causes that error, don't you think? Yeah, for sure. And if it's it, it may be a problem with the ROM chips, Tim, because obviously the ROMs hold a lot of sprite and character data. So if the if the board cannot load the sprites from the ROMs whenever they're referencing them, maybe it only has maybe only the M Bison and Saget ROMs are working. But it, usually in that case, you would still get a a boot of some sort. Uh, you know, like it, it, it wouldn't necessarily reset just because it couldn't load the sprite information. It may give you like corrupted sprites or something like that. So we may be looking at more of like a custom chip on the board. So with that said, Tim, let's go ahead and look at the outline here so we can address Russ's question. Now, like Tim said, from your description, it's very possible that this could be caused by a game board issue. However, we need to check the power supply first to make sure it's sending the correct voltage. Use a multimeter to check the plus 5 volts DC and the plus 12 volts DC lines and adjust if needed. Now, Tim, we always recommend maybe adjusting that up just a bit more than 5 volts, maybe to the 5.05 or 5.1 range. So that way, if it's a very hungry power 
power or a very power hungry board hopefully that little bit of extra voltage will help it kick over and perform properly so that's something to think to keep in mind now if the voltage is correct but the reset continues to occur then it is probably a game board issue you can see our post on inspecting an arcade board um the cps a01 custom chip is a source of so many problems. And Tim, this is from our friend Raymond, uh, Channel Maniac, uh, at ArcadeComponents.com, that guy. Uh, he will tell you that the CPS-A-01 custom chip is a source of so many problems. And so it, you may check that to see if it's working. Tim, I think the only way to replace that is to get another one from, a, from another board. And so I don't know if they have them readily available out there, but you may wanna check it just to see if it's working properly. And then, Tim, several people have created these CPS-1 diagnostic ROMs that will actually run through checks on the board. And they've got two different versions for two different A boards, I believe. Um, I linked to one of them there, and this is from jmrk.net. But if you got this diagnostic ROM, you could pop that on the board, and then it'll read basically all the, uh, all the different things on your board and see what's working and what's not and give you a pretty good diagnosis of those. And so uh, it may be worth getting that ROM uh, burned for you and then putting it on your board just to run through some of the uh, different different parts that may be good just to just to let you know what parts may be good on your board and which ones may be malfunctioning and Tim like I said there's another modification on that that somebody made too for the different a board and it just depends on which a board that your uh, that your CPS one game runs of course this is we're talking about Street Fighter 2 here so whichever a board your CPS 2 or CPS one is running on that Street Fighter 2 would be the one that you want to run but there is a link there to that ROM so you could get it and if you need a burn of that you can always go to hobbyroms.com Tim which is who we usually recommend for ROM burns anyway so uh, Tim with all that said is there anything else that's, uh, that you would say here to Russ uh, that may help him get his Street Fighter 2 back up and running no I think we've covered it pretty good good luck Russ Sounds good. So, Russ, hopefully it answers your question, and good luck getting that Street Fighter 2 fully working. Tim, it's always frustrating when a game partially works, but getting it over that hump of fully working sometimes can be a challenge. So, Russ, we hope that some of the advice we gave you tonight will help you with your diagnostic, uh, your diagnosing your Street Fighter 2 problems as well. So. And Tim Rexer Show just donated $3, and he says, Thanks for help with power to my track and field. And I have been corresponding with the Rexer Show, Tim. He is a track and field game that he's trying to restore. And we've been uh, we've been talking back and forth about some AC wiring issues that he's having. So uh, hopefully hopefully we've got that kind of narrowed down now. It sounds like he got it figured out for a little bit. He's having trouble getting AC to the game. Uh, and we thought there may have been some malfunctioning, like AC line filters or some other things. But it sounds like now we may be in a good spot. He may have identified where the problems are. And so, guys, you know, tracing down wiring, especially in old cabinets, can be very frustrating, as Regs or Show knows. And so, uh, you know, don't get frustrated. Just, you know, take it one step at a time. Start at the wall, like I told him to do, and just kind of go through the cabinet, see where that AC power is flowing to and where it's not, and then go from there. And always remember, Tim, you got fuses, interlocks, and other things that can interrupt AC power as well, right? Yes. And uh, I bet he's a good player at that. So tell him to get it fixed. And we want to see a video. I bet it'd be fun to watch him play that game. Sounds good, Tim. You know, for me, anytime I play it, I got to do the pencil trick. So right. <laughs> there you go. And if you don't know what I mean, you may be too young. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so it's kind of like using the pencil on the cassette tape too, right, Tim? Yep. Okay. Well, Tim, before I get too far, and I do want to give away some stuff. Now, last time we didn't give away anything, and everybody's like, well, you got to give away two prizes next show. And so uh, before before we get into uh, any more questions, I will say that I brought you back something from where I went. So uh, I went to Canada uh, on my vacation to visit family. I actually have family up in Canada. And Canada's a really cool place, literally, this time of year, which is nice. I got away from the heat for a little bit. Uh, highs there were about 70, Tim, versus 105 nice. that we have here now. So I'm very, uh, it was very pleasant. It was a great vacation. Uh, it was busy and I still feel a little jet lagged from it, but we had a good time. But while I was there, I visited a place that no longer exists here, but still exists in Canada, and that is Toys R Us, Tim. Wow. So um, I went to several Toys R Us locations, and um, at one of them, they had a little clearance for one of these things, and I grabbed one for you. And this is the Atari um, World's, let's see, wor World's Coolest Joystick. And it's an arcade sound joystick keychain, and you can hear it if I do this. Oh, there you go. Hang on. Okay. There we oh, go. Oh, there we go. Yeah, you got some noise there. And so I got one of these for you from Toys R Us. So you can always, you know, you can have something from Toys R Us. This may be the last item you ever get from there. <laughs> uh, but I also bought one to give away for tonight. Okay. And then on top of that, 
I have one last heat gun. Okay. So, how do you win these items? We have two things we're giving away tonight. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take two people who enter the contest and at random. And the two people will receive, one of you will receive the uh, Atari joystick and one of you will receive the heat gun. So in order to enter, what you need to do is send an email to contest at arcaderepairtips.com. Make sure you include a shipping address in your email so that way I can just ship it to you whenever, if you win. And we want to make sure you put a keyword in there so we know that you actually watched. And Tim, I'm going to let you pick the keyword. So, again, Again, send an email to contest at arcaderepairtips.com. Put your shipping address in there and make sure you include the keyword summer. Summer. Easy enough. I was going to say 105, but I like summer. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, keyword summer in that email when you send it and you will be entered to win either the world's coolest little joystick here that makes some noise. Or you'll be in, you, this is the last heat gun. Remember, we've had several of these. This is the last one I have. So if you want a heat gun, now would be the time to enter. So make sure, make, and I don't know why you need a heat gun now. I mean, you just take the thing, heat shrink outside. It'll probably shrink itself here. But if you want a heat gun or you want the opportunity to win this or the world's coolest joystick, you guys, again, send an email to contest at arcaderepairtips.com. Put your shipping address in there and make sure you include the keyword that's your cue, Tim. Summer. Summer. Sorry. There we go. Summer. Make sure you I'm not include. Not next to you. Can't poke me. Yeah, that's right. Make sure you include the keyword "summer" in there, so we know you actually watched the show. And like I said, we'll pick two people at random. One of you guys will receive the heat gun, the last heat gun that I have, and one of you guys will uh, receive the joystick. So there you go. So and we'll we'll reiterate that here in a bit. So let's see what we got here. YouTube Punk says uh, that on that Street Fighter Two, unfortunately, we're gonna have to send it to India to fix it. He thinks. So, um, you know, since it was only bringing up the India level? Yeah. No chuckles? No? <laughs> Not even funny a little bit? Okay, there we go. Uh, let's see. Uh, Angelina, play choice 10 countertop boots, but after two minutes it resets. Any thoughts? So just like on this previous question, Tim, anytime we have resetting issues, power supply is going to be the first place to go. Let's make sure that we're getting power good DC and AC voltage to the game, okay? And especially to the game board. That's the big the big one. So a lot of times we will check voltage at the board. So that means either on a component on the board or sometimes just to the pins, uh, just depending on how we want to check it. And so make sure that you're using a multimeter that you know that your 5 and your 12 volts are dialed in properly and that it's getting the correct DC and AC voltage. That's so very key in order to keep resets from happening. So uh, let's see. Oh, Rexer Show said, yeah, the comb and the pencil trick on track and field. He's done it yeah. too. So you see, there you go. Uh, let's see. Uh, YouTube Punk says it's a heat gun and not a hair dryer. This is true. Um, and Tim, before we had heat guns, sometimes we would use hair dryers to heat to you know heat up the heat shrink so that it would shrink over our wire. But hair dryers take forever, forever. Oh, yeah, you're better off using a lighter, I would yep. say, than a, than a than a hair dryer. Get an actual heat gun. They're not that expensive. You can win one, obviously, today. Or if you don't end up winning this one, go down to Harbor, Harbor Freight and pick one up when they have it on sale for 20 bucks. Uh, it will save you so much time and effort. Plus, the heat gun is good for more than heat shrink. It's really great for removing art artwork that's been stuck to cabinets for, like, you know, 40 years and things like that. Yep. So, uh, like great for control, control panel, panel overlays. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah, and Tim just mentioned. We love it on control panel overlays. And so, like, stuff like that, it'll, if you hit, hit that control panel overlay with the heat gun. And, Tim, something I saw on, like, one of these do-it-yourself uh, TikTok, you know, videos is that uh -huh. they had a rusted nut that would not move, and the guy hit it with the heat gun for about 60 seconds and loosened it. Nice, I can believe that, because a lot of times we would use like a propane torch or something to heat it up. Anything that will heat it up will cause it to um, it expand just a little bit and like loosen up. Yeah, that's probably a great idea. We yeah. try it. Yeah, I have not tried this. It was on one of these TikTok videos. And I'm not on TikTok. I just saw it, you know, somebody reposted on like Twitter where the guy just took, it was a rusted bolt and uh, bolt and nut. And he just hit that nut for about 60 seconds with that heat gun and then boop, came right off. And so most of the time I hit it with like WD-40 or something. But, you know, hit it with a little WD-40, hit it with the heat gun. Maybe it, maybe you'll have some luck that way too. So, uh, but yeah, it's 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 good for that too. So again, good for removing adhesive stuff. Good for loosening up rusted you know parts and pieces. So heat guns are very a very handy tool to have around for sure. So uh, let's see. Joe Holt, Mama's electric carving knife works great. Banging on track and field buttons. <laughs> so. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, you can, I mean, there are all sorts of methods to get, you know, the whole point behind track and field is hitting those buttons in sequence, right, Tim? Right. And that's what, like, the pencil and the comb and everything help you do. And so, you know, hey, if it's an electric carving knife, it's a comb, it's a pencil, you know. So if you don't know those tricks, you need to watch somebody old school play track and field, so... Okay, I think we are caught up, Tim. So, uh, and we will be, I'll say the contest stuff here again a little bit. Make sure you remind me, Tim, just in case I forget. So, Okay. Okay, let us go to our next question from Marla, Tim. And Marla says, I have a full-size upright Cuber game. Until I moved, it worked perfectly. Now it powers up and does everything it should, but it won't add new credits. It's fine for a while, and then it stopped taking quarters or letting me open it and manually adding credits. I am assuming that a wire loosened... Uh, or disconnected. Are you able to tell me where to look? I have no experience with electronics whatsoever. The mass of spaghetti wires inside is daunting. Any help would be appreciated. Thanks, Marla. Now, Tim, if you saw the mass of spaghetti wires, you will see down below where we are right here that that is the title of tonight's episode, A Mass of Spaghetti Wires. I love that term. <laughs> uh, and so we totally get what you where you're coming from here, Marla. We have been in this same situation where we're looking at a cabinet and just thinking, good Lord, that's a lot of wire. And yeah. so, you know, um, and, and I always like that quote, I think uh, we, we said it before from McGruber, where, the, where he opens this up. He's like, there's a bunch of wires here. I'm more of like a three wire guy, you know, I don't need yeah. all these wires. And so, uh, Tim, so she has this Qbert, and Qbert's a really great game. And it worked perfectly till she moved it. Isn't this a story that we hear a lot, right? Is that, oh, everything was working, but then I moved the game across the room or I moved it to a different house and all of a sudden we're not working. But it seems like it's working except it's just not adding credit. She can't do it manually. She can't do it uh, with a coin. And so with that in mind, Tim, what can Marla do in order to make her Qbert game accept credits again? Well, you, you know, we just... Like you said, it can be daunting, but it's very fixable. Um, most guys listening out there would be glad to have this problem with their Cuber broke. Um, most of them would know what to do, but you know, we're gonna go through it pretty simply. When you think about it, Cuber uh, being a Gottlieb game, Gottlieb made pinball games, every pinball game we've ever saw. In fact, I read somewhere that there is about a half a mile of wiring in each pinball game. Uh, if you stretched all the wires out, it'd go about half a mile. So no wonder when you look in there, you're probably wondering what the heck. So, but if she'll get the manual and find out what the pinouts are, now the pinouts tell us where each wire ends up. In other words, on the board, where does it go? And a lot of times it's pretty self-explanatory. You don't have to be really good at reading schematics and stuff to figure out pin one being on the far left and then you know it goes one two three four or it may be maybe going a b c d but she can look at uh get the manual or get the pinouts offline and try to find which one but before i would go to the back end of the board i would suspect more the front end where the coin door is it could have been something as simple as there's only there's three places that two wires can go and so look at both switches uh, it's weird that neither switch will work. I, I assume she's tried them both. So by that method, it's probably a loose ground wire. So I would look at the black wires and try to uh, establish where one broke or something. Um, and then the manual will help you. You can trace that back to your main board. Now, if it did come loose off the main board, uh, you'll just have to find out where the coin uh, connector switches where they go into the harness and make sure the wiring has continuity all the way through to that and if some of that sounds great to you Marla what I'm saying then you need to watch a lot of our videos because we break a lot of that down to real simple terms um, how to use a multimeter how to check for continuity those type of things you're gonna need to pick up some skills to fix this but it's not a hard problem at all in fact, uh, if we were at an auction and we saw this, we would definitely bid on it, right, John? We, we want to get this game and fix it. Uh, but, of course, get back with us, Marla. Let us know after you've done a little more research, looked at your pinouts, looked at your manual, and tried to trace those wires around. Maybe a few more pictures of uh, the wiring itself or up front might would help, too. But we'll be here. And if you, you uh, need more help figuring it out, then just please write us. 
Yeah, Tim. And the picture that I have on this slide is not a picture of Marla's Qbert in particular. It's just a picture of a Qbert. And the reason why right. I included this is because the wiring in Qbert is pretty heavy compared to other arcade games. Like you said, Tim, Gottlieb was a pinball manufacturer that this was their first game, I think, that they really did for art, like an arcade video game. And so they were still kind of holding to some of those concepts that you know, pinball machines use as far as wiring and all that kind of stuff. And so with that in mind, you will find more wiring in Qbert than you will in a lot of different classic games. And so let me go ahead and throw up the, the, uh, the outline here, Tim, so we can see. So yes, the right. wiring in Qbert can be very daunting as the game was developed by Gottlieb, who was known for their pinball machines at the time. Your best bet is to trace the wires back from the coin switches, the switches that the coin activates when it drops the coin into the slot, to make sure that they are connected properly and that the wires are in good condition. Now, Tim mentioned you can just look in the front of the coin door there, Tim, and you may find a loose wire. If both are malfunctioning, if both coin switches are not working, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a broken ground somewhere, right, Tim? No, that, that would be my first guess. Exactly. So somewhere there may be a broken ground. And so what you want to do is you may be looking for a black wire that looks like it's stripped on the end or has a fork terminal or a, a quick disconnect terminal on it and is not connected to anything. If you see that, then you may just be able to reconnect it up and be in good shape. But we do, we do recommend che checking the continuity back to the game board if you know how to do that. And so what that requires is putting a multimeter in continuity check mode and then basically putting one probe of the multimeter on the pin on the board where the coin switch is and putting the other end on the actual wire that you think it goes to. So that way you can make sure that there's a good connection there. But again, you may not be familiar with that, and if you're not, like Tim mentioned, you may watch some of our videos and things that will help you get acquainted with processes like that. Now, and like like we mentioned, while you could work from the pinouts on this issue, it's probably best just to check the wiring and connections first, considering it was working before it was moved. And so it may just be a very small, loose connection somewhere in that coin door that's preventing you from doing it. And so. With that said, check the coin door first, see if you can find any like loose or frayed or broken wires anywhere. And if you can't, then you may want to try to go back to the game board and make sure you're getting con continuity between all the parts. And Tim, I did put the pinouts here so that Marla okay. uh, could find, you know, and this pinout list I believe has it for a lot of variations of Qbert. And this is from KLOV or Arcade Museum or whatever you want to call it. Basically what we consider KLOV, Killer List of Video Games. And so uh, I did link this link down below in the show description as well, Marla, so you can just click on it and get those pinouts from there. Tim, is there anything else here that you, uh, you'd like to recommend for Marla to get her Qbert to where it'll coin up again? I cannot think of anything at this time. She'll just have to follow up with us later. Sounds good. So, Marla, hopefully I answered your question, and good luck getting your Qbert to coin back up so that you can actually play it again. And, Tim, we got a couple of comments in the uh, live chat here. Joe says, whack the coin door. I bet it's a coin mech hung up uh, or holding a little coin counter that wire down. That could be possible, too. Coin counters sometimes will malfunction and cause, like, non-coin issues. And so you may check the coin counters as well to make sure that they're functioning properly. Tim, we don't need the coin counters, but most games do have them wired from the factory, correct? Sure, for operators to use. Yes, exactly. So, um, Razor Show says, I guess when she says manually add credit, she's pushing the micro switch lever behind the coin door so she knows where the coin switch starts. That is correct. So, Marla, if you're manually adding credits, like you're saying, you're probably either pressing on like a little button on the coin switch or the wire that actually activates the coin switch when the coin falls through. That is what we're saying is the coin switch. So, there should be two wires going to that coin switch, right, Tim? Correct. So you should have a ground and an activation wire. If you're missing one of those wires or it doesn't look like there's two wires connected to those coin switches, then you need to figure out where one of them may have come off. So let's see. Okay. Uh, Alan says that the Qbert looks like the back of his Mach 3, which was also a Gottlieb game, right, Tim? Yes. Yes. It does look like it. Yes. Very similar setup for sure. So, okay. Well, I think that does it for Marla. So let us... Let us look at the live chat. It looks like we have a question here, Tim, from Jumping General. I have a Legend of Kage PCB. It's before the JAMA days. So how difficult is it to make an edge connector harness from scratch to plug in the PCB? I don't have a harness, only the board. So Tim, uh, Jumping General wants to wire up his Legend of Kage PCB to an, uh, to an arcade cabinet, but it's not JAMA. So he's wondering, how can I make a harness so that it will, so that it will work with the game? Well... 
it's not very difficult, but it's pretty time consuming. And saying that, you'll have to find the game pinouts like we talked about earlier. See how many pins you need, what size connector. In other words, is it a 44 pin or is it a 28 pin or what it 20 pin, whatever it is. And I'm sure you can buy those through some of our distributors and stuff. And then the easiest way to do it would be not to muck with the current one. Uh, probably to just cut one wire at a time, put new pins on it, and pop it in where it goes on the, on the new one. Now you can take a small screwdriver or something and take those out, but as old as that game is, it just seems like every time I try that, um, it just, they break, they're brittle, the wires come out, uh, they're hard to get out. I, at this point, I would probably just cut, restrip the wire one at a time and put it in the new connector where it needs to go. Like I said, very time consuming. It does take a long time, but if you got time and it's it's kind of fun to do, I I repinned a few like that. Yeah, so if you, all you have to do, like Tim mentioned, is find the edge connector and then whatever edge connector size you need for the game. So like Tim said, if it's a 20 pin, um, Arcade Parts and Repair and some other places will have those size edge connectors that you need. And then once you do that, you'll just need to insert the pins with the wires that you need for the pinouts. Um, sometimes you can find them fully populated already with wires. And if you can do that, that'll save you a lot of time. But if not, if you just find like the edge connector, you will have to insert the pins into the edge connector with the wires attached. And then once you do that, once you you only need to insert the ones that you need for the pinouts. And once you do that, you just need to wire it up. It's a pretty simple process. You just need to determine how many pins you need for the edge connector, and then order the right the right connector part, and then put the pins into the edge connector with the wires attached. So, um, Angelina says it's not it's not cage. It's pronounced cage with a K. I've heard people got onto me about this before. I've heard Kage on this one for some reason my entire life. I don't know why. Um, people have said it, it's supposed to be, I've heard Cage, I've heard Kage. I'm not sure, Tim. I don't know how it's supposed to be pronounced. Uh, it's just one time I said Cage and people got on to me. So ever since then, I've gotten Kage. So uh, like I said, I guess it depends on, on who you are or, uh, you know, or how you want to pronounce it. But, uh, you know, chassis, chassis, tomato, right. tomato, Tim. So, right. But anyway, oh, Mr. Dwayne 79 just joined us, Tim. He says late as always, and Tim, what do we say around here? You're never late. You're always on time. You're always on time. That is correct. So, but uh, we're glad you're here, Mr. Dwayne. I'm glad that you could join us tonight. So, yeah, like I said, so Cage, Kage, like I said, whatever you want to say. I just had people, I had people upset with me one time because I said Cage. So, like I said, and eh, whatever. So pronounce it the way you want. But I like that game. It's a pretty decent game if you've not played it. You know, so. Well, Tim, I think we are caught up on the live chat once again, so let us move on to a question from Vincent. And Vincent says, Rookie here, I've seen many of your videos and hope you hope I can get help. I bought a Golden Tee Complete 4 red board. Resolution and screen are in primo condition. When my son and I play, the game just randomly shuts off. The marquee stays powered. The screen is powered. When the game turns off, there's no image on the screen, but I can tell it's getting electricity. This is not a case of playing blind. The game just zonks itself off. If I turn the game off and reboot, everything is fine until it happens again. Usually get to play about five holes. Uh, I think there's a little bit more to this, Tim. Let me see. Yes, I have a little bit more here before we continue. I bought an APC surge protector, although I'm not certain it was needed. It has not made any difference. Have you ever heard of such an issue? Ricky research and watching some of your videos indicate that it may be, or I may have a power supply issue. I have a low acumen with this stuff, but I'm willing to learn to get my game working again. Thanks for any suggestions. I appreciate your info on Facebook and YouTube. Vincent from Oak, uh, Oak, uh, let's see, Oknomowoc, Wisconsin. Okay. Did I say that right? That's close enough. <laughs> so Oknomowoc. Wisconsin. I'm ter you see, this is I am terrible at pronouncing things, Tim. I'm just terrible with it. But Wisconsin, nonetheless. We've got Vincent here. <laughs> now, Tim, uh, this is a pretty common problem we see with a lot of modern games, I feel like. So when I say modern, obviously stuff that was late 90s, early 2000s, where our marquee light is on, our monitor is on, and the game just shuts off. But everything seems to be working, except I can't play the game. So right. what do you think is going on with Vincent's uh, Golden Tee here? We like to call this the... The lights are on, but nobody's home symptom, symptom, right? 
it's so common. We, in fact, we talked about it already tonight a couple of times where the power, switch and power supply will, is, you've got the AC voltage which runs your monitor, uh, power to your monitor, I should say, and power to your lights, stuff like that, but it switches to DC and it runs to your board. Again, after a few, it's almost probably in the same time or time frame that his power supply is failing or it needs to be adjusted. So we're gonna to try to adjust it up just a little bit and that may completely solve it or it may be time to replace it, but definitely probably a power supply issue. Yeah, Tim, and I like the term zonks itself off. I like yeah. that a lot. So, um, <laughs> uh, and let's see, Jeepers Creeper says it's Okanomowoc. O okay. Okanomowoc. Hey, I, look, I'm, I'm terrible at pronouncing things anyway, so there you go. But uh, uh, I think you're right here, Tim. I think it's probably a power supply issue. You got to remember, whenever we're getting marquee lights and monitors, we've got AC power, right, Tim? Correct. So as long as we have AC power, then we should be good. It sounds like we're missing the DC power here whenever it zonks itself off. So, Tim, with that said, let's go ahead and go to the outline here. And, yes, it does sound like a switching power supply issue. You note that when the game zonks itself off, that the marquee light and monitor still seem to be getting power. Both these parts run off AC power, while most game boards run off DC power. That usually comes from a switching power supply. Since your Golden T4 is a newer PC-based game, it's going to use an ATX-style power supply. You can get these power supplies from several parts distributors, including Twisted Quarter. And Tim, we have a link there. That same link appears down below in the show description. But that should take them to a 250-watt ATX-style power supply that's specifically made for Golden T and the red board. So he should be good to go with that. So anything else for Vincent before we move on? No, that's... I think... Uh... Vincent should be good and set up. He just needs to probably check his voltage, but he probably needs to replace it, maybe too. Yeah, and that and reinstalling the power supply is really not a big deal. Most of those connectors are pretty easy to, to hook up. And so, uh, you know, as long as you don't hook them up backwards like we had earlier in the show here, Tim, um, they, but the ATX style ones typically are keyed a certain way to where they will only go in that way. And so a lot of times you should not have to worry about that, but always double check. Uh, take lots of pictures before you before you do the install to make sure that you're hooking up everything properly. Right, Tim? Correct. So there you go. So, Vincent, hopefully that answers your question, and good luck getting your Golden T Complete 4 back up and running. And again, really does sound like a switching power supply issue. Uh, replace it. We think you're going to be in good shape after that. So, Rexer Show chimed in, Tim, on the pinout question he said wouldn't he need the right crimper if he's going to repin and connect pins to the wires himself or can you buy the wires with the pins already on that is a good point you will need a d sub crimper in order to crimp the wires onto the pins correct him right unless like your advice was maybe i can i don't know the pin out for that game i don't know if it's common or what it is uh if he could buy a wire harness it would be easier just to replace and wire the game up he can even connect them, but connect them to the current wires. But he is exactly right. You got to have the right tools and the right size uh, crimps and everything, you know. So it, it just, yeah, I assume that, yes, he would know that if he's going to repin it, he's going to have to have some tools. And we talk about those in the arcade toolbox. That is correct. And we actually talk about the D sub crimper, which is the one we usually use for crimping um, JAMA. JAMA pins specifically, or those, I forget what the, is it 0.44? I forget what the, the little edge harness pins are, what the size is on off the top of my head. Well, it's like 0.156. Whatever. So, yeah, 0.156. Yeah, that's it. I'm thinking it's something else. Right. Yeah, so, but, uh, yeah, so you'll need a D-sub crimper to crimp those on, but hopefully you can find, and hopefully you can find a harness that's already populated with wire. That'll make your life so much easier if you can. Now, Russell brought up a good point too, Tim. There is a Tato to JAMA harness connector adapter that, uh, from, let's see, it says from uh from arcade shop that might work as well you, you could play it to verify um it would work on that tato title though so you could always wire your chat your your cabinet jamma and then get an adapter for the board that you're trying to hook up as well correct tim that would be a great idea yeah thank you for 
talking about that. Yeah, and the nice thing about that is if you do that, you can still put JAMA boards in the cabinet as well. So you can swap out that Tato board if you want to at some point. You're more than welcome to do that. And so it kind of gives you a little bit more flexibility. But if it's a game that you're trying to take back, let's say it's a dedicated Tato game, something like Kicks or something like that, and you really want to uh, make it restore like it was before, then you'll probably want to do the wiring harness like it was originally. If it's just a generic cabinet, you may want to do the JAMA, uh, just JAMA wiring on it, and then just buy the adapter for the game that you want to play. So, let's see. Okay, Mike's Arcade. He's saying Mike's Arcade and Arcade Shop should have those Tato adapters. So there you go. Good. Okay. Okay, I think it uh, looks like we're caught up on the live chat, Tim. So let's go ahead and move on to David's question. David says, hi, I picked up two arcade cabinets for basically nothing as, someone's, as someone was about to throw them out. This, uh, the Miss Pac-Man works. It just needs a lot of TLC. The Map Mania, my favorite game of all time, only shows a white screen. I'm new to all this, so any help would be greatly appreciated. Thanks, David. Now, David sent some pictures here, Tim, so I'm going to show those up on the screen so people can see. So we have the Map Mania and the Miss Pac-Man. Now, this Miss Pac-Man here, Tim, is actually a converted Pac-Man cabinet that somebody converted right. to Miss Pac-Man, which is common. We see it a lot. The Map Mania also seems to be a Midway or Pac-Man style cabinet as well. It's very similar to the, uh, Pac the Pac-Man cabinet in size and, and dimension. And we have a picture of him showing the white screen on the Map Mania. We also see the inside of the Map Mania. And, Tim, the inside of this cabinet is pretty rough, especially the bottom That's of it, it looks like. Yeah, and that power supply uh, may be an antique now, Tim. I'm not for sure, but it's looking pretty rough up in there. And so with all that said and with all these pictures, uh, Tim, what do you think is going on with David's Map Mania here? What can he do in order to get this game back up and running? Well, you know, we always say start at power, but in this case, we're going to start by, at cleaning. We're going to blow all that out and clean as much of that dirt off as we can. Um, just so, so we can, I, I don't know if we could see down in there. You definitely want to check, there's a lot of fuses down there and things that could have blown. So you want to check your fuses and then we always start at power, so we check your power and so forth. Um, the fact that it's getting a white screen means your monitor's getting power. But I don't know that the, the DC, again, like we talked about earlier, the AC part might be working, but not so sure about the DC part. So I would check the voltage at the game board um, and then check the power supply for sure. Now, if in a miracle that that power supply and everything is still working, it's probably possible he could have a bad board. It's just not outputting uh, or it's got damaged over the years and stuff. But first of all, we're just, you know, and we've been there. We, you know, use all kinds of stuff you can find in the bottom of those cabinets. But that one really looks dirty. So I would definitely spend some time uh, cleaning everything and getting all the gunk off the wires and stuff. Take a little extra time with the power off. Make sure everything is good and clean. And then maybe we we'll kind of go from there. There's some fuses, like I said, down the bottom. Check your power supply. And that's that's probably where we'd start, you know. Uh, but good luck. I mean, it's it's cool. Uh, we're getting the this uh, show theme tonight, Jonathan. Of people getting cool games for free, and so maybe the luck will spread to you guys. So uh, maybe in the chat room, you want to tell us about the best game you ever got for free or something. While we got, if we have any downtime. But anyway, uh, I think if he'll just clean it up and just start at power, that'll be a good start to getting this game back up and repaired. Yeah, Tim, and we talked earlier about the white screen, how the white screen basically indicates that we should be getting AC voltage from from the bottom. So that means the monitor should be working at least a little bit. Now, we may need to adjust it a little bit here and there, but at least the monitor, we think, is mostly working, which does help. But, yeah, in this particular case, it's definitely looking like a power issue, probably with our power supply. Um, but let me go ahead and throw up the outline here so we can talk a little bit more about that. From your pictures, the Map Mania looks to be a, in a converted Pac-Man style cabinet. Not necessarily Pac-Man, but very much in that style. Uh, the fact uh -huh. that we're getting the widescreen, again, means that we're getting AC power. With that said, the bottom of the cabinet looks to be in pretty rough shape. Let's start by cleaning it out a bit and checking the switching power supply with the multimeter. Make sure that the AC input voltage is correct and it's outputting good DC voltage to the game board. And you can see our post on checking and replacing a power supply for more information. If the board is getting good DC voltage, then you could have a problem with your game board. Now, let me say right off the bat, Tim, I don't know if you saw the picture of the game board, but it actually looked pretty clean. 
Um, yeah. I'm going to roll back here so people can see. If you look at the upper right-hand corner of this slide, you will see that game board is actually in pretty decent shape, it looks like. And so the game board itself was not on the ground, and it looks like this cabinet, Tim, may have even suffered a little bit of water damage. Hard to tell for sure, but it is pretty rough down there. And so, I mean, but the game board looks to be in good condition. So, but that power supply seriously looks like looks like it may be the original one they put in there in like the 1980s. And, and so with that said, I think it is going to be a good idea to go ahead and make sure that that power supply is working properly. And then once you get to that, you can start doing additional troubleshooting based on what you know about the power supply. Tim, do you have anything else that you want to add here before we move on? No, I think that's a lot of good suggestions there, Jonathan. I think he'll get that one going. Sounds good. So, David, hopefully answers your questions, and good luck getting that Matt Mania up and running 100%. And congratulations on getting two free games. Like Tim mentioned, we love hearing people getting free games, and it's become a theme in this episode, and we'll be talking even more about that here in a bit for sure. So, free games, Tim. It's it's really it's really a good day when you can get a free arcade game, right? Yeah, that's a good day every day. That's right. So... David, hopefully we gave you some good places to start. Keep us posted. Let us know how it's going with your repair. Okay, I'm coming over to the live chat here, and uh, it looks like we've had a couple people reply to your request there, Tim. Russell says, Atari Assault, coolest and most unique game, uh, free game I've ever gotten for free. So there you go. Okay. So Assault. Uh, Nate says, someone was tossing a Kadash uh, arcade machine out my friend... Um, out my friend picked it up and traded it to me for a super nintendo game mint condition blows my mind and someone was tossing it yeah crazy wow uh let's see um alan my firefox stopped working over 10 years ago worked on every part of it i bought a repro wiring harness from golden age arcade parts and i am finally playing firefox again so there you go uh angelina says that that they also think that the Pac-Man bottom looks water damaged. And that's kind of what I was thinking too, Tim. I, I think yeah. that cabinet may have, res may have had some water damage in it. Uh, it just looks like that. Not necessarily, but just from the way it looks, it could have some water damage. So, uh, Free games, Tim. I'm trying to think of any free games I've gotten. I don't think I've gotten anything free. I've gotten things pretty cheap. But I take that. Uh, Go ahead. Well, well, you remember what the best free game I ever got. Can you think of that one? Oh, gosh. Um... Old game. An old game. Uh, you got me. I don't know. I, I remember I got a free Sea Wolf. That's right. Okay, I do remember the free Sea Wolf. Well, no, you know what? I think I gave them ten bucks. Oh, yeah. Okay. You see, I was about to say that's <laughs> they not were free. They throwing it out, but I gave them ten dollars anyway. So, um, I will say that you guys got me. Uh, you and Stan picked up a Donkey Kong for cheap, and gave it to me for free. Um, at one point and I forgot how cheap it was. It was cheap. I remember that because I, I had texted you guys about it when I saw it on Craigslist. This was, I mean, probably 15 years ago or something. But I texted you and Stan about it and both of you guys had Donkey Kongs at the time and you guys fixed it up and gave it to me. And so that's the only game I've ever uh -huh. gotten for free. So, <laughs> But uh, I still have the Donkey Kong. It's still here. So, uh -huh. But I don't think I've gotten any other games for free. I'm looking around. Everything else costs money. So, or <laughs> labor or something, you know? I mean... Right. Um, you know, when you go to the arcade auction, if you check the dumpsters, sometimes you'll find some free games out there, right, Tim? Yeah, almost always. Yeah, for sure. So it's definitely possible to find free games. But, uh, you know, I, there's been more on curbs lately. I guess people just getting rid of stuff. Who knows? But Okay, Tim, let us move to the next question here from Sergio. So Sergio writes... Good evening. I need help fixing my Midway NFL Blitz cabinet. The cabinet turns on and off well. It loads properly with good audio and picture. However, it freezes after a few minutes of use, prompting me to press the reset switch. This is after replacing the power supply a few months ago when the arcade would not start up. I have also tried adjusting the black voltage knob with no real change in results. I am stuck at this point and don't know where to go from here. Any assistance would be greatly appreciated. Thanks, Sergio. So, Tim, we have Sergio here. He has an NFL Blitz arcade cabinet, and it sounds like every so often it will just freeze up. So, um, after a few minutes, it says, prompting him to press the reset switch. Now, I wrote I wrote a um, reply to this, but Sergio actually wrote me back today and said he replaced the hard drive with a flash drive, and he also, he also did something else to it, and I can't remember what it is. So, I had put, you know, a hard drive to flash drive might help because it may be freezing up on the load, but it looks like that may not be the case here. 
Um, and I forgot what the other thing he tried was. But um, but he says he's still having the freezing out problem. So with that, it, keeping that in mind, Tim, what else can you tell Sergio here in order to keep his NFL blitz from freezing up? Well, one of the dangers is if he's not using a multimeter and checking his voltage, you could actually um, – it's, it's really – they're very picky and very there's not much of a turn so he really needs to put a multimeter on and really dial the voltage in he may think it's pretty close or he may get it to come on but it could be a little off like 4.98 or 5.15 so he needs to really get his voltage dialed in if that's correct and it's not his hard drive then it's got to be something in the main board a clock or something that's killing it but I would really suspect, and you know what? He says he got a new power supply a couple months ago, and um, it obviously must have been working because it wasn't working at all, and then he got a power supply, got it working. So my next, just because it's only two months old doesn't mean that it's already not bad either. So make sure that the voltage is right, and make sure that uh, you can dial it in really pretty easily with the game on a load with the with the going and then if it can't or if it's bad then maybe he can get a refund or try to get it swapped in for another one but uh my, i'm still really leaning in that power supply area being that he replaced the hard drive so um that's might be my first guess i would really try to dial in that voltage yeah, and that, I put part of that here on the slide, Tim. So let me go ahead and put up the slide real quick so we can discuss this. Uh, first off, please please be sure to adjust. Uh, please be sure that you're adjusting or you're using your multimeter when you're adjusting the voltage knob. Sorry, couldn't get that out. Sending the incorrect voltage to the game board can cause damage if you are not careful. With that said, use a multimeter to ensure the voltage is correct. Again, this might be a good idea to turn the plus 5 volts VC... Uh, volts DC up to 5.05 or 5.1, especially on a game like Blitz, because Blitz is very power hungry, like we talked about earlier. So you really want to turn this up a little bit higher just to make sure that you're getting getting the voltage, you know, there when it doesn't. Now, when it does freeze up, uh, something I would recommend is going ahead and checking the voltage on the board somewhere and making sure that the voltage on the board is correct at that time. So, um, you know, there are there are places on there where you should be able to test for 5 volts, 12 volts. And so when the game freezes up, leave it on for a second and then try testing some points on the board where you know five volts is going to make sure that you're getting five volts at the board if you're low on the board then there may be something else that's causing it not to be uh not to get the correct voltage there may be there may be other problems tim mentioned that the power supply may not be good that is possible but since the game is running you may you're probably okay but it may not hurt to you know try a different power supply or see if you can get the guy who you, who you bought it from to give you a uh, like a replacement just to be sure Again, I did say that we could replace the hard drive here, but Sergio gave us an update today saying that he had already swapped out the hard drive, so it's definitely not a hard drive issue at this point. But I did put a link here. If you are having this problem, you may need to suspect your hard drive as well, and there is a link down below to a flash drive on eBay as a replacement if you need that. So, Tim, uh, like I said, we can check the power supply here. Now, it's very possible, Sergio, that you do have an actual game board issue, which is why when it does freeze up, we do want to check the voltage on the board to see if the, the board is getting the actual voltage it needs. Something else that sometimes helps whenever we're having freeze-ups like this is to put a thermal ca camera on the game board to see if there are any areas that are heating up excessively. Uh, this usually will indicate that there's a problem with a chip or some other part on the board uh, that, and, and it'll show you if it's malfunctioning or not. And so if you have access to a thermal ca camera or a phone, that, a phone that has access to a thermal camera, then when it freezes up, you may try putting down the game board as well to see if you see any areas that are hotter than others, as this can indicate bad parts on the board as well. And at that point, you can do the inspecting an arcade board um, video. You can do some of the tricks that we talk about in that. Or you may need to ship it off for repair. We talked about El Dorado games earlier, Tim. That would be somewhere you could ship it off to repair uh, if you needed that. So, uh, Tim, is there any else, anything else for Sergio here before we move on? I can't think of anything. I think we've got him a pretty good start. There we go. Uh, it looks like we... Um, uh, Nate has a little bit on, on, on a carnival, he says. Uh, he changed the flash drive, changed the power supply, reseed everything, checked the 5 volts, the 12 volts. Um, and so he got a... He, he said he got a... Um, Let's see. He got a, uh, 
he got something to turn off twice a day being operated and it has about an hour downtime sad but only way to resolve this issue so he actually has something that actually shuts the game off and will turn it back on if it needs to um, okay. If it's getting too hot, like we mentioned, Tim, so a thermal camera is a great thing to use on it to kind of show you if there are dead areas on the board or areas that need uh, that need help or replacement. Is if it, you see areas getting hot, if you run your hand along the board, just like right over the board, and you feel a hot area, could indicate bad chips as well. And so um, at that point, you may need to actually fix your board, or you just need to make you may need to add additional cooling to the cabinet. So, That's um, a good idea. yeah, so Blitz has usually a fan in the back. I have a sports station that has Blitz 2000 and Showtime, and it does have a fan in it from the bottom and the top. And it came like that from the factory. And so if, you're, if your game, if your board is heating up excessively, you could just have a problem with your board. But if it's just heating up to the point where it may be slightly freezing up, you may need to, you may need to look into getting some better cooling in the cabinet itself as well. Nate says he rigged up something to restart the game. You can do that as well. But if you're getting a excessive heat off the board, you may actually have a board issue. And so, you know, you may want to consider sending that off to repair um, if that's the case. But if you're just getting a little bit of heat, maybe there's there's just an area of the board that seems a little hotter than the rest, then you may be able to, to solve that with just adding additional cooling to the cabinet. So, um, let's see. Uh, Nate says he, mul he multi-metered uh, all the chips. Everything was as a chip on the board. Board just must be failing. It seems these type of boards are just temperamental, and that could be the case. Even if all the the chips check out, you could just have a temperamental board, or there could be a solder joint that's just, you know, maybe whenever that heat starts heating up, it just kind of separates or something like that. So it's very possible that that's the case too. Um, again, a lot of these boards are very temperamental. You got to remember these games are old now, right, Tim? Yeah, very old. Yeah. Not getting any younger, that's for sure. Right, and so they are temperamental, and just with a little bit of heat or a little bit of, of flex in the board, it can cause a lot of problems. And so, you know, I mean, you can have somebody fix it, but like with Nate, he just rigged up kind of a temporary solution for him to, to make it work. That may work for you, um, but, you know, more than likely there probably is an issue with the board itself that you'll need to get fixed at some point, so... Tim, Russell just donated $20. Thank you so much, Russell. That is awesome. Wow. We appreciate that so much. That you that means so much to us whenever you guys make donations. It just means to us that you guys appreciate what we do here. And so thank you thank you so much, Russell, for your contributions. Thank you, Regzer Show, earlier for his contribution. And if you want to make a similar contribution, you can do that by hitting the little money sign down in the live chat window there and donating some to us. We would greatly appreciate it. All that money, Tim, basically just goes to feeding you and me during the live show. So, I mean, we don't... <laughs> We don't make enough money to do anything else, but we do get a good meal typically out of the deal. So, you know, Tim, I know you get to feed Tim since he's on a work assignment. He's getting fed by his work. So I don't even have to spend money on Tim this month. So, <laughs> Yeah, he got off good tonight, didn't we? Absolutely. So, uh, but hey, hey, when you're back in town, man, you and me, we'll go eat. So, okay. Um, but anyway, uh, and Russell says, when you fix the game, you play the game, Tim. So That's obviously right. our ch catchphrase here, that is correct. Um, Tim, the reason we say that here is because sometimes we forget about the playing the game part you and me definitely yeah. do well we get so busy fixing games we'll fix a game here fix a game here fix a game here uh tim we've been places where we just hop from game to game to game to game fixing games we don't even take time to play them we just like if it comes on that's great we're good we're going to the next one and so our catchphrase is a reminder to all of you that once you fix the game you got to play the you game play too. The game. right you got to <laughs> play the game too it's not just because that's why you're fixing the game and so you can get some enjoyment out of it and play it so just keep that in mind it's a good reminder for all of us don't just fix the game play the game too so okay tim let us move on oh we're at a rapid fire section already some quick questions and answers with tim and Tim, for those people who may be watching for the first time, this is why I rapid fire three questions right at you and you rapid fire three answers right back at me. And so uh, this month we have one from Bob on a broken neck on a CRT monitor. We have one from Mike on a power supply conversion kit question. And we have one from Millstone's Mansion about using maybe a switching power supply in a pole position cabinet. So Tim, let us go ahead and get to the rapid quick question and answer section. So our first question is from Bob. He says, can you fix a broken neck on an Electrohome G08 Victor monitor? So that's question number one. Question number two is from Mike. I'm installing a power supply conversion kit on my Galaga. It recommends tapping into the black and white wires going to the monitor. Which wire is live and which one is neutral? Thanks, Mike. So again, Bob, broken neck on a G08. Mike, 
black and white wires, which one's hot, which one's neutral. And now millstone mansions. If games like Atari Pole Position use their own specific power supply, does this mean that a switching power supply would not be feasible in these early machines? So uh, again, Tim, those are the three questions that we have tonight. So let us move to Bob first. Can you fix a broken neck on a Electro Home G08 vector monitor? I cannot. Okay. <laughs> Can anybody? I, Is that the probably question? Probably possible, but more trouble than it would be worth. You'd have to basically redo a tube. And no, if it's talking about the glass and everything is broken, then no. Now, if you're talking about the actual little board, we have had some of those that have broken too. We have glued them back together and resoldered and run trace wires, although that's not very fun either. Uh, the best best answer though is no. Okay, so then we had Mike. He's doing the um, he's doing the Galaga power supply conversion kit from Arcade Shop, and he's wondering he's got the white and the black wires, but which one's the hot and which one's the neutral, Tim? Well, the white wire is usually your neutral, and your black wire is live or hot. Uh, the ground is usually green, uh, but those could be different colors. Uh, I've seen, you know, blue, orange, and pink, and everything else. So best thing is to consult his manual and follow the what's actually coming from the the plug at his house. Correct. And then Millstone Mansion. So if older older games had their own kind of specialized power supplies, can we still use switching power supplies in them? Um, it depends on the game, kind of. Uh, so most you can, at some, to some extent, but a lot of them, a lot of them require maybe 24 volts or something, or that you can't. So it kind of de just depends on the game. Okay, Tim. Well, I think you answered them all here. So let's go ahead and throw out the outline so everybody can kind of get a summary of what we just discussed. So Bob, of course, the broken neck on the G08. If the neck of the tube is broken, the answer is no. It can't be repaired. Now, if the neck board is broken, the answer is maybe. It just depends on what you mean by <laughs> broken neck. So like Tim mentioned, if, if, it's, if the glass is broken, if the actual tube neck is broken... That's that's pretty much a no. Repairing that's very, very difficult. Now, if it's the neck board, like Tim mentioned, we can glue it back together and bridge the solder connections and make it work again. That's a big hassle, but that's a lot easier than trying to replace trying to replace a broken tube for sure. So it just All depends right. on what you mean by broken neck. So uh, just let us know what you're talking about and we can kind of give you a more definitive answer. Uh, with Mike on the Galaga... Um, power supply conversion kit in a typical ac wiring setup your white wire is neutral your black wire is, is live or hot um check the plug wiring coming into your cabinet to confirm this very important like tim mentioned sometimes you'll see some weird colors okay but if you're just talking about standard ac wiring you know 90 percent of the time your white's going to be neutral your black's going to be live or hot and your green's going to be floor ground right tim correct so there you go. And then Millstone Mansion, while many early arcade games did come with linear power supplies that were specific to their hardware, most of them still output the voltage that you find on a switching power supply. The plus 5 volts DC, the plus 12 volts DC, or the negative 5 if you need that. And Tim, just to show um, the picture that I put here on the slide, I know you, you may not be able to see it, um, I highlight that this is a pole position board and you'll see that the pole position wants 5 volts. Okay, wow. so because pole position wants 5 volts, you can use a switching power supply. But like Tim mentioned, if you've got a game that uses some weird voltage, like a 24 volt, you may be able to get a different switching style power supply to put in it, but a standard switching power supply may not work. So it depends on the voltage requirements of the game that you're trying to put the power supply in as to whether or not you can use a off-the-shelf switcher or whether you need to stick with the original power supply. Tim, anything to add to any of these questions before we move on? I don't think so. Sounds good. So hopefully uh, Bob, Mike, and Millstones Mansions that answers all your questions. And if you have any additional questions, please feel free to email us at questions at arcaderepairtips.com and we can help you out further. Okay, Tim, I'm going to remind everybody that if you want to win our win one of our two contest items tonight, either the last of our heat guns or um, the world's coolest uh, Atari little keychain joystick, that you need to send a an email to quite. Uh, to contest at arcaderepairtips.com, contest at arcaderepairtips.com. Make sure you put your shipping address in there and the keyword. Oh, I'm sorry, Summer. 
Summer. Yeah, or, yes. You know. Okay. And the keyword summer. Sorry, T- Tim is missing his cues tonight. He's he's all yeah. over the place. It's hard when we're not in the same room together. I can't just poke you. <laughs> you he you only nudges me. Yeah. Exactly. So again, send an email to contest at arcaderepairtips.com. Put your name, your shipping address, and the keyword summer in there, and you will have an opportunity to win either the world's coolest joystick, which is a nice little keychain that makes a noise. Oh, there's you hear a little walking. <laughs> So you get some sounds like that, or you will win the last of our heat guns, which is very mm-hmm. handy, like we talked about earlier. So, um, yeah, and what we'll do is we'll just pick two winners. One of you guys will get at random, and one of you guys will get the keychain. One of you guys will get the 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 hot air gun. So there you go, there you go, the heat gun. So good stuff. So contest at arcaderepairtips.com. Oh, and we should say we don't sell your information. All that information stays private. Okay, so we're not selling any of the information that you guys send to us. So. Okay, Tim, let us move on to um, your traveling section. So, sorry guys, I totally forgot to put Tim's pictures from his previous trip on the last live show outline. That's totally my bad. And in fact, if you watch the last one, you'll see where I cut that error. But I did put them on this outline, Tim, so you can take us through um, where you went last, or June actually, back in June. You had a trip to South Dakota, correct? Correct. So I'll go ahead and throw the pictures up here, Tim, and um, if you want to follow along in your outline, you can just let me know when I need to go to the next page. But um, okay. the first thing you sent me were these pictures from Devil's Gulch, right? Well, yeah. First of all, if you've never been to South Dakota, I just wanted to show how beautiful it was. This was one of my favorite places to go, although, believe it or not, Jonathan, it was not the cool. It's a lot cooler here in California than it was in South Dakota. I was expecting 70 degree days and I was getting 95 and 100 degrees there uh, back in uh, first of, in June. And uh, But guys, just look at the pictures. Um, this was not very far. I was working in Sioux Falls. This was about a 30 minute drive and well worth the drive. If you're ever up in that territory, if you live up there, uh, you're very blessed. It's a, it kind of reminds me, John, if you had West Texas had trees and grass. Uh, there's a lot of canyons and uh, uh, areas like that where you just would not expect it. And then all of a sudden there's this long, that's about 50 to 100 feet right there with water down there. You guys can just see how pretty that is. So if you'll go on to the next stop, the, well, there were a couple of places I wanted to go, but... Uh, you know, it's always time constraints and, and where I'm going to be. But downtown Sioux Falls, they had this very, very nice, you want to talk about a fancy arcade bar. It's called 81. As you can see, just um, that's the entrance way going in. You wouldn't really think there was a big arcade back there. But then going in, uh, we just start with some of the pictures, John. It looked right there was a, a really cool dance game. You know, those seem to be taken back up and look at that floor with all the lights and stuff on it and then there was a Sopranos uh, pinball machine and we'll go on through they had a lot of kind of old to new games so you see the Space Invaders, Wrestlemania uh, Total Carnage and then what's that uh, another pinball game? Total Nuclear Annihilation I believe Tim. Yeah Total Nuclear Annihilation so some pretty rare stuff too. Uh, again, lot more pinball games you see, Stranger Things, and with a sign on it um, or something that says on there. And then um, Deadpool is there. Uh, let's see what else we got. Ghostbusters and uh, Scared Stiff. And then uh, look at this gun shooting game uh, called Raising Storm. And so I just kind of took general pictures, old and new, just some games that either I'd never seen or like this next game that NARC hadn't seen in a long time. Uh, Look at the Rambo, kind of a newer game. Um, So anyway, just want to take some pictures. If you're ever up in that area, um, that's a really good place just to hang out, uh, grab some food. Uh, It was a, a drink or whatever, but... Um, downtown area if if you've ever seen pictures of Sioux Falls you'll see I guess I should have included them of the famous waterfalls which are right downtown not but a few blocks from this arcade so a good place to go Uh, felt very safe just kind of walking around and never at any time I feel really threatened 
course, not far from the downtown area. It didn't was it kind of a little sketchy, but for the most part, everything was nice and people were very friendly. So if you're from that area, like I said, I think you are lucky. I think it's one beautiful area to live in. Sounds good, Tim. Well, we, uh, we're we so glad that you shared those pictures with us, and I'm so sorry I did not include those on last month's outline, which where they should have been, and instead I did include them on this month. But, uh, Tim, have you visited any places while you're out in California? Is there anywhere that we can expect to see some pictures of? Well, probably not. And the, there's two reasons. I just came back from Florida, and I had scheduled to go to two different places I was going to check, and um, those of you who live in Florida know how this could be. It came a monsoon rain and flooded and everything. So I couldn't even leave the hotel one night because the flooding was about a foot deep out in the parking lot. And uh, I had to get some food ordered in and I actually paid double the, the tip because they actually brought it in in the water um, to me. Um, so I didn't get to go anywhere in Florida. And then this trip, if those of you have been to California, no, unless it's pretty close, I ain't getting in this traffic any more than I have to. Uh, and I've been pretty busy, even after we get off the live show, I got a little bit of work to do. And uh, But I'm just pretty much staying here at the hotel and walking to what's close by. So unless there's one close by, I may do a search. Maybe tomorrow I'll, uh, I'll get lucky if I get off early. Maybe you know of something in this area in Concord. Um, something I'm finding out, Jonathan, as I travel, you know, uh, the rent for arcade uh, would be very expensive these days. So a lot of them are not always in the best areas of town, and if you're not from there, uh, it's not uh, most of the time when I get to go, it's after dark. And, uh, and so I'm not always comfortable just touring a new place in the dark. But um, anyway, uh, hopefully, who knows? We'll see. Maybe tomorrow night, if I get lucky, I'll find a cool place not too far. At least a Dave & Buster's or something. Sounds good, Tim. Yeah, so hopefully you will. If not, that's okay. But we do love seeing the pictures. I think everybody likes seeing the different pictures and stuff. Robbie J says, welcome to Florida. Of course, you were there how long ago now? Uh, it hadn't been that long ago. A couple weeks ago, I was in Miami area. I was actually in Hollywood california i mean hollywood florida right that's uh uh billy mitchell's stomping grounds right yeah it is so there you go well tim thanks for sharing those pictures again hopefully you'll get to visit somewhere while you're out in california if not though that's okay too well uh like i said well wait till your next travels where you do get to check out somewhere and i totally get the traffic thing i've always heard traffic in california is terrible so well, Miami was probably some of the, you know, California, is, this is my opinion, California is a lot of traffic, but fairly nice drivers. Like, everybody's just like, eh, it's traffic. You just kind of wait, you give your signal, people will let you in. They ain't doing that in Miami. You want in, you got to get in, and they won't give a signal when they're coming over. And it, Miami was, Never mind. I don't want to. I, I could never go back to the downtown area of Miami, and I would be just happy. Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood, very, very nice area to visit. Sounds good, Tim. Well, we hope that you have fun in California, like I said, and it sounds like you had at least a little bit of fun in Florida, except for the flooding and the driving. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know how it is. Everybody's different where you go and everything like that. So, um, but uh, if you do get a chance to visit some arcades, bring us back some pictures, if you will. So, and I, I'll mention, John, next couple trips I don't, it's not going to slow down for me much um I, austin texas and biloxi mississippi within the next month wow golly yeah you're on the move yeah we're, we're gonna be doing a where in the world is tim peterson pretty soon <laughs> yeah my wife probably thinking that too yeah you know where's waldo where's tim that's what i'm thinking so anyway uh well if you live any in any of those areas where tim is going to be here in the next month or so austin or uh, where's the other one tim uh, Biloxi, Mississippi. Biloxi, Mississippi. Then let us know, and maybe uh, you can connect up with Tim. You know, he likes. Sometimes he has some downtime, and when he does, he does like to connect with uh, viewers and listeners. So, if you're in those That's areas, good. please shoot us an email. Questions at Arcade Repair Tips, and let us know. So, Tim, let's go I'll ahead and go up, to the news. Always up for some pizza. That's right. Always <laughs> up for some pizza for sure. So, okay, Tim, let's go ahead and move to the news that we had for this uh, episode. And, Tim, we had Prime Day this past month in July. And so we All did right. post quite a few deals and everything. And so I put a couple of the better deals up here just so we can discuss them real quick. Oh, 
Sorry, Tim. Uh, we've got the um, we had a J Show GBS 8200 video converter for twenty three dollars and eighty four cents. That was on sale. Um, we had an Xbox Series S console that was selling for $199.99. I think that's the cheapest that console has been. We had a Williams Defender lunchbox for $15.99. And Tim, we had this really cool Metal Slug 3 brick set. Now the cool thing though is that it was $69.99 on Prime Day and it looks like right now if you buy it, it's actually $59.99. So you actually, oh, wow. if you buy it right now, you can get it cheaper than what it was on Prime Day. And we have the links down below to all of these. Now the price on all of these except for the Metal Slug have gone up. But the Metal Slug 3 brick set is cool because the buttons actually function and do things. There's a coin drop that you can put a coin in. The joystick makes movement and things. So, I mean, it's kind of, it's a Lego style set that's got some movement and things to it. It's really neat, really a neat concept. And so, you know, if you're looking for some cool decor for your game room, I think, and plus uh, maybe a cool project to do with your kids, I think the Metal Slug 3 brick set may be a really great thing for you to get. So again, and I think right now, if you buy it now and you clip the coupon on the product page, you can get it for $59. $9.99, which is ten dollars cheaper than what it was on on Prime Day. Now, the J Show um, uh, Gombas 8200 is is a standard GBS 8200 video converter. But Tim, we like to buy these from Amazon because Amazon has one of the best return policies. So if you have a right. problem with one of these generic GBS 8200 video converters and you buy it from Amazon, it doesn't work for you. Amazon's return policy is usually very good, which means that you can return it back to them usually without too many issues. So, um, and Tim, the Williams Defender lunchbox, I just thought looked cool. I thought it'd be a cool piece to put yeah, in people's cool. game rooms. Or man, if you uh, take your lunch to work, maybe you actually want to take your lunch in that because it makes you feel <laughs> like you're a kid again. I don't know. I'm sure you'll figure out a use for it. And I think that's gone up now, Tim, to twenty dollars. And then, of course, the Xbox Series S, Tim, um, had been—it's been three hundred dollars for a while. But to see it drop to two hundred was uh, very encouraging. Hopefully, we'll see more movement on that console as well. So, just some of the deals that we had on Prime Day. There were a lot more other deals. Hopefully, you guys cashed in and got some good items and things. We tried to—we tried to find anything arcade-related and throw it out there for you. So, hopefully, you found some good stuff, and we're able to find some, and able to get some good deals. Tim, I got a pair of roller skates personally, so. Um, Oh, okay. I, I, we already talked about how much I like roller skating. And so I got a pair of roller right. skates and I got to try them out at the roller skating rink. So, um, you know, well, and they well. were pretty good. So now I can go roller skating anytime I want. So there you go. <laughs> uh, but you never know what you're going to find on Prime Day. It's a good time to cash in on some deals. And hopefully you guys got in on some of those. So, And Tim, uh, we heard that they're going to have another Prime Deal Day in October. Oh. So um, we may be posting more deals when that happens. And so I, it's not Prime Day, but it's a Prime Deals Day. So okay. um, when that happens, if there's some good deals that are arcade related, we'll be sure to throw them out there for you. Okay, Tim. Well, the, the big announcement this month was probably the um, Venom Pinball Machine by Stern. Now, obviously, this has been rumored for about a year, Tim. Our friend Mark was really on top of this. And he was saying they were going to debut it last year at Comic-Con. But um, they ended up going with the 007 pin, I think, instead. So, uh -huh. um, but now, finally, we are getting the release of the Venom Pinball Machine. And uh, here's what we know about it, Tim. Venom is designed by Brian Eddy, and the artwork is by Zombie Eddy, uh, also known as Jeremy Packer. It's a two-flippered, six-ball standard width game design with a single in-lane and out-lane on each side, Tim. A single in-lane and out-lane on each side. As expected, the playfield is a riot of color and includes some unique gameplay features. At the start of each game, the player chooses the host they want to bond with. So, uh, you can pick Eddie Brock, or you can pick Peter Parker, or I think you can I think you can pick um, uh, you know some of the other Spider Man. I think Spider Gwen may be an option too. Gwen Stacy. So um, yeah, so you actually get to pick your host, and then there's music and there's music and and uh, artwork theming that goes along with each host, which is really cool. So you get different gameplay features and unique music and display animation for each for each host, which is cool. So basically, they've kind of gone with the same kind of theme that they do with like the uh, music pins, where you pick a song and then all the theming kind of shifts around that song. Here, you pick a host and all the theming kind of shifts around the host. Does that make sense? Yes. So that's what we're going with. So I mean, Tim, it looks cool, but um, these things are getting pretty pricey, and Russell mentions that too. Um, the pricing on pinball machines now is getting pretty high, Tim. I, mean, I don't know if we see any signs of it slowing. So I'm definitely not going to be buying one of these uh, anytime soon. But Tim, what do you think about Venom? Are you interested in it? I mean, is this something you would lay down money for probably? Or, or, or where, you, where do you stand on it? No, it's probably not something that just for my personal collection, but I definitely want to play it. It looks fun. I mean, I, I think it'll, you know... There's so many new ones I haven't even played yet before that, you know, but 
I'll put it on the list, and if we see it at Pinball Festival, we'll definitely have to play it. For sure, Tim. And you've gotten, because you've been going to all these arcades, you've gotten the opportunity to play a lot of these newer games. I have not really been going to a lot of these, so I haven't gotten the opportunity to play a lot of these that I want to play. And so I'm hoping at some point I'll be able to make a festival or I'll be able to find an arcade with a lot of the titles I want to play and give it some you know, play time. But, Tim, I'm definitely priced out of the market. I'm glad I bought my uh, new inbox pinball machine when I did because the prices have, on- I think they've almost doubled for pro models now from when I bought mine. So, I mean, just to give you an idea. So, I mean, I think my X-Men was, you know, 48 or something like that for a pro model. I mean, now you're looking at pro models that are going up into the 6, 7. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, they've really gone up in price. So... But, you know, I mean, it's because the market the market is basically dictating that. And as long as people are buying them at the price, they're going to continue to charge what they can for them. I understand that completely. So, But they definitely priced me out, I think. But, Tim, are you a big Spider-Man fan? Yeah, I love Spider-Man. Okay, are you a big Venom fan? You know, not, not so much. I'm a more original. I mean, you know, it's okay. Have you... Um... I, I got way more into Spider-Man than Venom. Okay, have you seen the new Venom movies with Tom Hardy? I have not seen the latest one, the the one that the recent one. They're pretty good if you haven't seen yeah. them yet. So uh, I've seen all of them or both of them, I guess, and they're both really good. I like them a lot. So and uh, speaking of Spider Man, if you haven't seen Across the Spider Verse, I believe it is um, available on demand now to where you can you can purchase it and rent it or buy it and watch it. And we went to the movie theater to see it, Tim, and it's really good. So um, if you if you're doing if you have nothing to watch and you want to watch something, uh, check out Across the Spider Verse. It's really good. I've heard that it's good. It's good. Um, let's see. Russell's asking if we're coming to TPF in 2024. You know, I, my schedule's not that far ahead. We'll just see. But, um, you know, it's been hard for me to make TPFs because, like, March is, like, the busiest month for me, I feel like. So, I mean, it's just a really tough month to get away. And so um, we'll just see how the schedule falls. I, I want to really get back to TPF, but right now it's just been it's been tough to make it work into my schedule. Um, Angelina says the Long Island uh, Game Room Show is this weekend at the Aviation Museum. So if you guys are in the area, the uh, the Long Island area, and want to go to the Game Room Show, you may check that out. I, yeah, I love going to shows and expos and stuff. It's just that it takes a lot of time. And, Tim, our schedule is so packed, it's just hard to fit those things in. But if you've got time, you should definitely go. For sure. Okay, Tim, well, this was probably the biggest news that we had this month, and that is, it, that is this find of... An environmental disc of Tron on the curb in Chicago. Wow! So uh, it's a and the this was from Kotaku. It also came from Arcade Blogger Tim, but super rare arcade machine worth thousands saved from dump. That's what the title was from Kotaku. And my post was, I'm sure many of us have seen an arcade cabinet or two sitting at the curb waiting to be trashed. Now imagine that cabinet is a working environmental disc of Tron worth around ten thousand plus dollars. Well, that's what happened recently to Tim uh, Lapatino recently while he was visiting some relatives in Chicago. Congrats on the pickup. Tim, this is amazing. I mean, um, and for those of you guys... Not only was it, it was working. Correct, it was working. Um, Tim, we always call these E-dots. We always kind of shorten it for Environmental Disc of Tron. So, um, Uh and these things have always been rare and hard to come by. And so to find one on the curb in Chicago, just sitting there, seems like a, uh, seems just insane. And and mostly working, Tim. Mostly working. I mean, you know, I I think it's amazing. And so I'm just glad it got saved because, Tim, there's just not many of these around anymore. And if anybody ever wants the opportunity to play it, they, you know, you've got to, you've got to have the cabinet. The environmental version is the one you want because it makes it's, it makes for an entirely different gameplay experience. And so the fact that this got saved from the dump is amazing. I'm so glad that it happened. And I'm so glad it's going to a collector that's going to take care of it because, uh, like I said, they're not making any more of these and we need to make sure we preserve as many as we can, uh, because, Otherwise, nobody will ever get to play them ever again. So uh, I'm glad that one less arcade game ended up in the dump. But as we saw earlier in the show, Tim, sometimes games can end up at the yeah. dump and be restored too. So, I mean, you right. just never know. But, <laughs> exactly. um, yeah, but it's good It's good that it found a good home, and that's what we want. So a great story. So glad that they found the, tri- uh, the Disc of Tron. And uh, like I said, it's going to a collector that's going to take care of it, and that's what matters. So a great story. And, Tim, if I could wish... 
If I could wish you all the luck in the world, I would wish that you would also find an environmental disc of Tron on the side of the road that you could take on. Right. So, um, free, to yeah. me, that's almost better than winning the lottery in a lot of ways. So uh, Almost. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about... Probably the same chances. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. You probably have better chances... You may have better chances of, of finding an environmental disc of Tron on the side of the road than you do of winning the lottery. You may actually have better chances of that. But uh, either way, you come out either good. One. Right, exactly. Either way, you come out good. So congratulations to Tim, and we look forward to uh, seeing seeing what uh, where he puts it and what he does with it going forward. So, okay, I now I'll win the lottery and buy Tim's. Yeah, you can always do that. Just win the lottery, and then you can buy one. Right, exactly. Wow. I don't know if Tim will sell his, but you know, you can. Uh, wow. he, I'm sure you could get one from somewhere. You know, if you got enough money, people are probably willing to part with pretty much anything. So. Uh, Angelina says, what's the rarest game in your collection? You know, um, I'm not much for rare games just because, um, I tend to collect the stuff I like to play. And so, I mean, you know, I've got a Pac-Man Cabaret. Those are kind of rare, I guess. I don't know. Um, I've got a sports station I mentioned, a Blitz 2000, uh, with, uh, Showtime, uh, NBA Showtime on it. So the dual cabinets seem to be quite rare. It's not a dedicated cabinet, but still it's dual. Everything else I have is pretty common. Street Fighter 2, Mortal Kombat. Marvel vs. Capcom, Tekken Tag Tournament. I mean, that's all stuff that's pretty common. I have a DDR machine that's in storage that I'm really thinking about getting rid of, obviously. But uh, DDR machines, I guess, are rare. I don't know. I don't see them all the time, for sure. Um, but, yeah, I mean, other than that, not a whole lot. Tim, is there anything rare that you have? I know you've pretty much... You, well, your I was thinking... It, well, in the, in the past, I remember when we had the Swimmer. Yes. You don't see those very often. I like that game. Agreed. Swimmer was a really it. great game, so... Um, but, so maybe yeah, I was about to say, I mean, you had sea wolves, and sea wolves are sometimes hard to come by. Uh, let's see, I was trying to think of the stuff Tim had. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, not a lot of not a lot of rare games, just because it's like I like the games I want to play, and most of the games I like to play are pretty common. You know, I mean, so you know, it's it just depends on who you are, I guess. So uh, let's see. I jumping. Had a joust cocktail one time that was pretty rare. We did have a Joust cocktail. That was rare. Now, it, it had been converted to a Tekken 2, I think. Sit down, Tekken yeah. 2. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, my cocktail cabinet is a Multicade, and we bought it. It was When we bought it, it was gutted. It had nothing in it. Um, but the tag on it is a Robbie Roto, uh, which I haven't seen a lot of Robbie Rotos, Tim. No? Yeah. But the cabinet itself, when we bought it, it was already gutted. It was not a Robbie Roto. Roto. There was no Robbie Roto parts in it. It was just a Midway cabinet, so... Um, yeah, so I mean, it just depends. I mean, Angelina says um, they got an Astro Fighter Japanese and a Caber Tail. So there you go. So I mean, yeah, there's. I mean, um, we've seen a lot of rare games, but we just don't collect. We don't end up collecting a lot of rare games. I think yeah, is the big thing. Yeah, always been our thing. We just find stuff that we like and usually fix it and sell it or keep it. Agreed. If it's rare, more than likely we're going to sell it because there's somebody out there who really wants it, right? I mean, like Swimmer, we didn't hold on to very long because there's somebody out there who wants that. We had the little, what were the little, um, we had that little um, cabinet that we had one at one time, the little white cabinet. I'm going to have to be closer than that. Let's see. It was half cabinet. size. Oh, yeah. What are those things called? It. It was a Moppet cabinet. Moppet. We had a Moppet cabinet. Those are rare. It, that one had been gutted, too, so we turned it into a multi-cade. But uh, Moppets, you know, we had, we had a Moppet cabinet at one point, too. So. Okay, Tim, well, speaking of rare things, I've got one more thing here. And somebody, uh, Joe sent this to us, and somebody in Missouri is selling a Fats Geronimo Showbiz animatronic. And they said that we should get it as a backdrop for the um, for the live show, which would be great. I think so. Yeah. That'd be great, except I don't have thirteen thousand dollars lying around, Tim. So, um, <laughs> right. and you guys can see this. I think it's still for sale. We've got the Facebook link here, and I think we have it down below. But um, yeah, so uh, Tim, this would make a great backdrop for the next show. LOL, Joe says, and it's a fully okay. restored, operational Fatch Geronimo animatronic from Showbiz Pizza Place with control system, located in St. Joseph, Missouri. Can be shipped, but man, thirteen thousand dollars. I think it's worth every penny, but. Um, a little bit out of our price range, Tim. Like I said, um, even pinball machines are out of our price range, and they're about half that price. So, 
Well, and having the control system that you could program probably and make him sing and do stuff would be pretty rare, too. Agreed, yeah. So, um, pretty cool stuff, though. And, uh, Tim, I, I would love, to, if I had a bigger house and a bigger area to put all this stuff, I would definitely love to have that. I think it would be cool. But, unfortunately, we do not. But whoever ends up buying it, let us know. We'd love to come see it. So, I think it would be really cool. One of these times, I want to be in the room with a rock of fire explosion again. It's been oh, decades, yeah. Tim. So... Uh, let's see. Yeah, so I think I think that uh, I think that's a cool piece. So oh, I and you know I, I don't know if anybody has the whole band. I know that sometimes on YouTube there's some people who have the whole the whole showbiz pizza band and everything. They're a whole rock of fire explosion set up, uh, which I think would be awesome. But man, I can't imagine what that costs now. So no. But anyway, so Tim, I think that does it for the show. I think we we're pretty much caught up on everything so let's just do a couple of housekeeping things before we head out and give our contact information we do want to remind everybody that we want your arcade related videos if you want some free advertising for your youtube channel we're always looking for people to submit short videos 10 minutes or less about arcade related topics send a link to your video uh, of your video to questions at arcade repair tips .com. our staff will review it if we like it we'll use it during one of our live show episodes make sure you put in a plug for your channel so people will know where to find you we look forward to seeing your submissions again and and, and Tim, we started this so that we could help out channels that may be on the cusp of trying to get monetized. And so if that's you, maybe you're just a few views away or a few subscribers away from getting monetized. Um, submit a video of your channel. We'll try to play it like before one of our live shows here. And hopefully we can kick a couple of our viewers and subscribers over your way so that you can get over that monetization hurdle. So again, uh, that's always open to you if you have arcade related videos on your channel. Uh, I was going to say something else here, Tim. I forgot what I was going to say, but um, I, it will come to me. Let us continue on. So let's talk about our contact information real quick. We have our general email at questions at arcaderepairtips.com, questions at arcaderepairtips.com. Make sure you put live show in the subject to get it mentioned on the show. Otherwise, we'll just answer it whenever we get around to it. And that's at questions at arcaderepairtips.com. So send them, send them our way. If you want some help, we'll be glad to help you out. We have our YouTube page at youtube.arcaderepairtips.com. We try to cover the comments from the last live show on the next episode. Now, those of you here who are here on YouTube, you obviously know where to find us, but maybe you're listening to this on our question and answer podcast feed. And if you are, then if you want to watch the after show, which comes immediately after this show, you will need to find this episode, episode 78, on our YouTube page at youtube.arcaderepairtips.com and go to the after show section. Uh, Tim, is there anything you want to tease for the, li for the after show real quick before we continue? You know, we, uh, I guess we'll talk a little bit about, uh, maybe we'll get into some sports or something, but nothing, I can't think of anything just blaring, but I do want to talk about a couple shows I'm watching that I didn't get to you quite in time to, to forward to mention, but one of them was a pretty strange show, and if, uh, if you kind of like weird shows that you don't know what's going to happen next, I, maybe I got one for you. Sounds good, Tim. And so if, and I'll also be talking about my trip to Canada, Tim, and visiting my family. And I got to go to two Toys R Us stores, which obviously in the States are closed down, but they're still up there. So I can talk about that. I also bought a new car, Tim. I can talk, well, new to me car. So we can talk about that too. But all that will be in the after show. And if you want to hear that again, you will need to go to the YouTube our YouTube channel at youtube.arcaderepairtips.com and look up this episode, episode 78, and then go to the after show section in order to listen to that. Of course, if you're watching it live right now, then all you have to do is just stay tuned after this, after the regular live show here in about five minutes, and we'll just kick into the after show right after. So no problems there, but uh, it just depends on how you're listening or viewing this content right now. And Tim, we have our podcast feed. That's where we have our live show audio. We have our interviews. We have question and answer podcasts. All sorts of audio uh, stuff can be found on our podcast feed. And you can find that on iTunes at itunes.arcaderepairtips.com. We also have it on Spotify at spotify.arcaderepairtips.com. And we had it on Stitcher, but like we said, I think Stitcher is shutting down this month. So uh, if you're going to subscribe on Stitcher, you better do it because they're about to shut it down. Sirius owns them now, and it sounds like it's going away. But again, we do have Stitcher for the mean, for the current time until it gets shut down at Stitcher arcaderepairtips.com and if you feel so inclined to leave us a five star review we would appreciate it go to itunes.arcaderepairtips.com and leave your five star review and your uh, comments about our show there we'd love that if you feel inclined to leave less than five stars please email us and let us know how we can improve we would love to hear from you and then we have our social media pages. We have our Facebook page at facebook.arcaderepairtips.com, facebook.arcaderepairtips.com. We always want to thank Mark for posting all the great information about Venom this past month. Uh, he was really on top of that, Tim, and so we want to thank him for doing that. Of course, 
Mark called this a year ago when they were going to debut it. He knew that Venom was going to come out, and so he has been on top of all this, and we want to thank him for his contributions to our page. And we also have our Twitter feed at twitter.arcaderepairtips.com. And, Tim, I think the cross-posting is working again, so anything that gets posted on Facebook does get posted on Twitter as well, so you can subscribe to either feed. And, Tim, I don't even know if I should call it Twitter anymore. It's X, right? So, um, right. on the X Whatever feed, I think our X feed is working, so um, uh, you can always subscribe over on X or on Facebook. Either way, whatever works for you. You don't have to do both. We'd appreciate it, but you can do one or the other and still get the content that you're looking for. And Tim, we've been posting all sorts of great stories and some of the newer stories uh, we're, we're going to cover on next month's live show, Tim. There's a couple of stories that broke within the last couple of days. We'll save those for our next live show. So before we go, let me remind everybody, if you want to enter the contest to win either this heat gun or this, the world's coolest uh, Atari joystick keychain, that you need to send an email to contest at arcaderepairtips.com with your name, your shipping address, and the keyword summer. Summer. So make sure that you put all of that in an email, send it to us, and you'll be entered to win either the world's coolest Atari joystick keychain, which I also got for Tim, or the uh, final heat gun that we have. So the final new heat gun. I'm going to have to go buy some more from like Harbor Freight or something when they put them on sale. But for now, that's the last one. So if you want a heat gun, this is a great opportunity to do that. Tim, we will leave that contest open for 24 hours. Okay, so if you're listening to this okay. or you're watching this video after the fact, 24 hours. So um, 24 hours from now, which is about 7.15 p.m. Central Time. So um, if you can get your contest entry in before 7 p.m. on Friday, August 11th, uh, Central Time, then you will be entered to win. So uh, if you may not be watching this live, but if you watch it within 24 hours, then you'll have a chance. So again, send an email to contest at arcaderepairtips.com. Leave your name, a shipping address, and the keyword summer, and you'll be entered to win. Uh, before we go, Tim, lots of thank yous in the live chat. Thank you from Jeepers Creepers. Great show. Uh, Russell says, as always, thanks for the content. Y'all have a good one. Phaser says, thank you guys. As always, great show. I appreciate you taking the time to share your expertise. Take care. So thank you guys so much. Hey, stay around, please. We have an after show coming up, okay? And I know some of you guys are, are just here for the arcade content. Totally get that. And if that's you, that's fine. We will cover arcade questions in the after show, but we just open it up for all topics. That's the only difference. And so if there are good shows that you've been watching, maybe your sports team is doing really good, maybe you had a life event happen this past month that you want to tell us about, you can feel free to do that in the after show as well. Me and Tim share our stuff with you, but you can also feel free to share your stuff with us. So, uh, Tim, I think that about does it, though, for our regular live live show so uh, do you have anything else before we close it up here no just thanks everybody i hope that the video and everything you know we haven't shot like this in a while but thank you john for, for the hard work that you did getting this to show together and making it still happen so i hope the quality was still good but thank you for turn, tuning in and uh again stick around for that after show if you have time Absolutely, Tim, and thank you for being here, even from California. We still have you, and uh, thanks to the miracle of the Internet, we're able to still broadcast. So thank you guys for that. We want to thank all of you who, who are watching this, whether you're watching it now live, thank you for being here during the show and participating, or if you're watching after the fact, thank you for watching after the fact, and we hope that you will join us next month when we have our next live show, episode 79, for September 2023. But until then, stay tuned for the after show. But if this is your exit ramp, remember here at Arcade Repair Tips when we fix the game, we play the game. Take care, Bye, everybody. everybody. We'll see you soon, either in the after show or next month for our live show. Thank you for watching this episode of the Arcade Repair Tips live show. All of our past episodes are available on our website at ArcadeRepairTips.com or on our YouTube page. This show is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only. Please consult a professional before attempting to repair any coin-operated machines yourself. The preceding program is a Varcade Entertainment production.
And we're back. Welcome, everybody, to the after show for episode 78 of the live show for August 2023. So, uh, Tim, I thought the show went really well. We had a really good turnout in the live chat, which is always fun. Um, and uh, we want to thank all you guys for interacting with us. It's always a good time when you guys are here. So uh, thank you guys for being here. Um, you know, this is the first time we've done remote in a while. So my earpiece, I'm still kind of fiddling with it, trying to get it right. So I try not to do it during the regular show, Tim, but I may have to do it more during the after show. So <laughs> that's OK. It is what it is. But. But um, anyway, Tim, how, how was your July? Maybe that's where we should start. That's usually how we start the after show. What all was going on during July for you? Gosh, it flew by so fast that, you know, it seemed like we had I had two birthday parties at our house on two different weekends. Of course, the 4th of July. Of course, I went on to Miami. It's just been the go, go, go. In fact, just sitting here, I, I was a little sleepy during the show because i'm like i'm so used to going i can't just sit and still you know how it is you get kind of kind of sluggish kind of sleepy but it's been non-stop how about yours yeah pretty much the same so we had my daughter's uh, birthday party she had it at like a little lego uh little lego store here that uh, just opened up not too long ago it's a bricks and minifigs which is a franchise uh -oh. tim and uh we really have enjoyed uh, going there, and so my, my daughter loves Legos, Olivia, so um, you know, we got there quite a bit. But she had our Lego party there. It was fantastic. We had a good time. And then, of course, we got ready for our trip. We had a lot of stuff to kind of get ready for that, and so and then we went to Canada for a week, and that was last week. And uh, glad to be back home. I think I mentioned in the, in the regular live show that I'm still feeling a little jet lag from all that. Um, to get up there is pretty much an entire day of traveling, Tim, because they want you at the airport three hours plus early for your flight because it's international. You have to go through customs. You have to go through security, but you also have to go through customs, which is uh, order right. in itself. And then, you know, we flew out of Houston, which was a three-hour drive from where we're located. And so, like, so going there, you had a three-hour drive. Then you had to get there three hours early, so that's six hours. Then it's a four-hour flight. That's ten hours. And then we had to drive – once we got there, you know, you had to wait like an hour or so for your luggage, get the rental car. And then, you know, we drove to the house. And so by the time you do all that, it's like a 12- or 14-hour day, so – that's crazy. Yeah. So, I mean, for a four-hour flight, but, you know, it's just there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. So, but, uh, so it was fun. Uh, Canada was nice. Uh, it was nice and cool. I have family up there. I haven't seen in probably 20 years. When I was, uh, when I was, uh, when I was, a, when I was a teenager, we went quite a bit to Canada. Probably took like four different trips and we'd stay with family all the times we went. So, uh, you know, it was relatively inexpensive as long as we got a good deal on the flight. And so, um, you know, it was one of our favorite trips though. And we had some cousins we grew up with there. And so some of my cousins I hadn't seen in 20 years because they haven't traveled down here like some of my older cousins have. And so it was really good to reconnect with them. It was good to see some sites. We went to, um, we went to Banff, we went to Emerald Lake, we went to the, um, uh, I forgot, there was, a, there was a waterfall, Tim, that is on the side of a mountain that's, that's caused by a melting glacier. And I mean, this thing is probably, you know, 200 feet high. I mean, it is a waterfall. And so, um, and it's cold because it's coming off of a glacier. And so um, we went there, that was really cool. And uh, it, it was just a great trip. Uh, can't say enough good things about Canada. The driver, like you're talking about, the drivers in California being nice. The drivers in Canada are super nice as well. So, but everything's in metric, so you know you're driving around at about a hundred, a hundred kilometers per hour. It feels like you're going, or it seems like you're going fast, but you're really just going like seventy. So, right. <laughs> Get used to using so what metric. Was the systems. Biggest, what was the biggest thing getting used to? Was it time difference, or what was? Um, you know, driving around is a little different. It's different, but the same is what I would say. Like, I mean, obviously they drive on the same side of the road. The road markings are very similar to what we have like here in Texas. Um, the metric system though is everywhere. So they use metric for everything. So that can be a little, takes a little getting used to. Like I said, you're driving a hundred and stuff like that, which is a little different. Um, the temperature was nice. I wore shorts every day. It was 50 in the morning, like I said, 70 in the evening. So, um, you know, but getting used to things, I mean, I could pro it's not much different, I feel like, than Texas. I, I definitely don't want to be there during the winter, though. Did you have to get Canadian money, or did they take dollars? Had to get Canadian money. Now, here's the thing. I use my credit card at most places because it gives you a really okay. favorable exchange rate. But we did get some Canadian money, too. And so we did spend some Canadian money here and there. But uh, mo for most things, I, I, uh, I just spent on my credit card. Um, Canada has dollar coins and $2 coins. 
Uh, so they don't have one dollar bills; they have one dollar coins. They don't have two dollar bills; they have two dollar coins. And so, a one dollar coin is called a loony. A two dollar coin is called a toonie. And so, um, <coughs> okay. and so like you know, so you have those. So you can have a pocket full of change and think you only have like you know here if you have a pocket full of change, you're like ah oh, you know it's just it's just change. But there, man, you get a pocket full of change, you have like fifty bucks in your pocket because you have all the one and two dollar coins or something, you know. So, I mean, that's a little different. I know why they do the coins, though, because the coins um, last longer in circulation than, like, bills do. So, you know, so, I mean, that's good. Right. Yeah. yeah. And like I said, they had Toys R Us there, so we went to two different Toys R Us. Um, my daughter still remembers when we had Toys R Us here. And so she was she had been saving her money to go to Toys R Us there. And so she bought a lot of stuff when we were there. My son had never been to a Toys R Us, but once, because they were not around when he was born, but once he went into a Toys R Us, he figured out what it was. So... But I, I, it makes. I bet, they, I bet they enjoyed it, huh? Absolutely. Now their their Toys R Us is different, though. Um, man, I tell you about half that thing. So it was almost like the whole store was broken up into thirds. Like a third of the store was Babies R Us, a third yeah. of the store was books, believe it or not, and then a third wow. of the store was toys. So it's not like a none of the Toys R Us we went into were like the traditional Toys R Us I remember as a kid. But still, I mean, a third of the store being toys is still a large amount of the store. And so, I mean, they still they still got to look around. They still saw toys that you don't see in other places. And plus, since it was August, there were a lot of clearance deals and, and things. So um, that's how I got the little joysticks. These were on clearance. So, you know, I got them for a pretty good price. So, And it's got French on there. That's how you know it was from Canada. So nice. French is one of their official languages, English and French. Right. So, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was a fun trip and... Uh, uh, it was just busy. We were wall to wall to wall every day. We went somewhere and we did something. So uh, it's nice to get back to a normal routine. Like I said, I still haven't recovered fully, but we're getting there. So, but you're in you're I was gonna say you're in California, which is also a different place. So yeah, it's a different country out here. <laughs> <laughs> just seems like it. Uh, I, I noticed that um, I went. No, normally, I have a thirty dollar budget. Uh, to eat on and just about anywhere in texas that's a steak and a a drink at least and a tip here that's pretty struggling that's mcdonald's you know <laughs> and so um i went i wanted some pizza and i had um i'm gonna think of it it's something to do with king arthur like knights of the round table round table pizza round table pizza that was some good pizza so, but, and I asked, because I had 30 bucks, the pizza was $20 for a small, but it had all the toppings on it. And I thought, that's pretty fair. So, I thought to myself, I didn't, it was, the menu was really weird, so I got one beer and one pizza. But I had no idea the small glass of beer was going to be $10. Oh my goodness. So, it ended up being $33. So I was like, that's a lot of money for one small beer and a pizza. But, um, you know, it's just, you know what, you get used to that. I've already filled up my my rental car as a Dodge Charger. And it's fun to drive, but it does drink gas. And it definitely has some pickup to it. Um, and so, you know, I put 14 gallons in with $73. And I was like, man, that's just... Yeah, I'm glad it wasn't my money, but at the same time, you know, it still is kind of my money when my company is paying for it. Uh, so, but the weather's been nice. Um, you know, I can see why people would like the weather and like to live here. I just don't know how they afford it. It's so, so much more expensive. Cost of living is probably three times where we live, Jonathan. Yeah, and that's a lot. And, um, and, in Calgary, where we were in Canada, like it, it was per liter price was how much it was, and I forget. I, I yeah, think the per, hard yeah, I was about to say I think the per liter price was like a dollar forty four. So what would that be to gallons? I'm gonna have to look it up. So how many liters are in a gallon, Tim? I have no idea. I did know when I was in Germany, but now I've forgotten. Yeah, exactly. See. Riveting, riv riveting uh, audio of me uh, looking up how many. So one gallon is three point seven eight five liters. So if you did one forty four by three point seven eight, three, yeah. So what would that be, Tim? <coughs> one forty four times three is like I don't know. It's about the same as here. It's about four dollars and something. Five dollars and forty four cents a gallon. 
Well, there you go. Yeah, so it was expensive there too. Um, we had to fill up twice. Yeah. We had a um, we had a Ford Explorer, Tim. So okay. So we had to fill up twice, but I mean, it, I mean, it, it wasn't. I mean, it was like sixty dollars to fill it up or something like that, which I was like, that's about right. You know, I mean, that's about what it would cost at home, I guess, sixty or seventy. So, you know, but that's that's U.S. That'd be U.S., not uh, not Canadian. So, but <clears throat> Canadian, it was almost is almost a hundred so to fill it up. So, but right. there you go. Yeah. So so gas is expensive up there too, Tim. For sure. So um, even though they're oil and gas rich up there, which I don't get, you think it'd be cheap there because of that. You'd say so, but it is what it is. So I will tell you this though: one thing that was weird, and California might be the same way. You know, they've outlawed all the temporary use plastics. So like, if you want a fork, it's a paper fork. If you want a knife, yeah. it's a paper knife. If you want a straw, it's a paper straw. So. Right. I got a paper straw in a plastic wrapper. Yep. I thought that was pretty smart. Yeah. So. Here's the thing about paper straws, though. They they kind of stink. Yeah. I think I'd rather just not use a straw. I, what people do here is they bring their own, like, metal straw. Yeah, the metal straw. I know what you're talking about. They keep it around with them and put it in their drink. Yep. I'm like, that's a good idea. Yeah, for sure. Um, I Like I said, like, for <coughs> Starbucks and stuff, I've gotten to just not using a straw on that kind of stuff. But um, the paper utensils are bad, too. Like, the paper forks, ugh, they don't work. It's like I'll just figure out a way to eat it without without a fork. So, I agree. yeah. So I mean, you know, it's just some of that stuff. But uh, I understand it. Trying to help the environment, totally get get that. That's good. It's just um, it, it's just the usability factor is just not there. I ho- maybe hopefully we can get to a point where we can make disposable uh, disposable utensils that actually work good and can also be recycled properly. So, yeah. but anyway. So yeah, it's just different places, Tim. Different things, and uh, hopefully you. Uh, you said you're coming back this weekend, so hopefully you have safe travels back to uh, the great country of Texas, Tim. Thank you. <laughs> there we go. So too. Yeah. So do you have any uh, fall plans coming up? Obviously, you said you're you're you've got a couple I'll places that you're in going. Austin, and then I've got to go to Biloxi. Uh, we were thinking about going to Germany. We pushed that to spring break of next year. Um, so with my wife starting a new job and stuff, so. Uh, my son will be home next week for his 21st birthday for a week. Uh, looking forward to that. Other than that, this fall, uh, my wife's new school gets a uh, a fall break, which is in October. So we're actually thinking it's, you know, October in Texas is like, um, you know, September or end of August for most places. It'll still be warm. But it be comfortable, and so we're thinking about maybe going to the beach for a few days. We'll see. You going to get down to Galveston, or probably to Galveston? Yeah, that sounds good. Galveston's nice. I mean, it's not the nicest beach, but it's it's serviceable, you know. And hey, when we showed um, pictures to my cousins that hadn't seen Texas of Galveston, I mean, they thought it looked great. So you know, I mean, you, you know, <clears throat> I mean, so you know, if you don't have a beach, having a beach is a big deal, right? Well, those Florida beaches are hard to beat, though. That is Man, true. They're nice. Mm. <laughs> so true. So, well, hopefully you'll have some safe travels. I don't know if we've got anywhere that we're really going for the rest of the year. I think we're pretty much going to stay here and and just, you know, we got school going on. So, I mean, you know. Well, uh, we've got a couple of concerts coming up that we're going to go to, um, some musical acts and things that we've already got tickets for. So uh, we got some of that stuff. Nice. But, um, yeah, no other big plans for the fall or the winter. We'll probably just uh, – we'll go see Thomas the Tank Engine in Dallas. Oh, and, Tim, I've got a lot of StubHub credit. And uh, and right now the Texas Rangers have an 86.4% chance of making the postseason. So I am saving up all of my stuff up credit to go to a postseason game. I'm going to take my kids to a postseason game because they've never been before. And so uh, I'm really looking forward to October for that. So I agree. Me too. There you go. So uh, let's talk about any investment stuff that you want to talk about, Tim, right now. Is there anything that's uh, really doing well? There's not much to talk about at all, John. Just some some oil stocks that I bought a long time ago have done okay and some invested in. Remember, we talked about investing in gold and silver. That has steadily kept going up. Uh, other than that, I've been sticking away from most stuff. It's too volatile right now. 
And Tim, I think that volatility is going to continue until maybe after the 2024 presidential election. Because, right, you know, the one thing the market doesn't like is uncertainty. We've talked about that before. That's right. And right yeah. now there's a lot of uncertainty as to who's going to win the presidential election and what policies are going to be put in place. <laughs> and typically after the election happens and we have a definitive winner, uh, typically the stock market just goes up. Because at that point, the stock market now has an idea of where we're going to be heading for the next several months, if not years. So... Um, so yeah, right now it's pretty volatile. Doesn't mean that there's not deals out there to be found, of course, but it's just kind of volatile. So um, you may want to, you know, be safe with your money. The good news, I think, me and Tim have talked about this, is that interest rates are high right now. So even putting your money into a savings account or a CD uh, or a bond can really yield you some good money. So yeah, so it's you just got to be careful <laughs> yeah so if you've got a savings account that's yielding less than about three percent right now you probably need to find somewhere else to put your money so because there's a lot of savings accounts out there that are, that are yielding four and five percent right now so i know i've got one so yeah so yeah so uh so check your savings accounts and see how much money they're yielding and if they're yielding less than about two percent or three percent you may look at some options for your money for sure uh, let's see. Sports talk, Tim. Um, MLB, we had the trade deadline. Did you see all the moves that were made or some of the moves? Man, there were some crazy moves made. And, and uh, does anybody, is there anybody that was playing for the Mets this year that's going to be playing for them next year? Only like some of their rookies, Tim. I mean, the Mets were... The, <laughs> they traded the farm. Well, I mean, they were they spent a lot of money in the offseason with the hope that they were going to be able to compete. And for some reason, they just couldn't put it together. Even having two of the best pitchers in in baseball, Verlander and Max Scherzer having Buck Showalter as the manager there, which is a long time veteran uh, manager, having a lot of other talented players there. They just could not put it together. And so uh, I feel uh, bad for the Mets, but you know, one team's loss is another team's gain, Tim. And we ended up getting Max Scherzer off the deal. So um, I yeah. was happy about that. Max seems to have performed well in his first two starts with us. And so hopefully that will continue. Verlander, of course, going to our nemesis, the Astros, back to the Astros, I should say. Of course, he was with them before he uh, he signed that yeah, big deal with the Mets. There before, right? Yes, he was there before he signed the big deal with the Mets in the offseason. So he's very familiar with that. Uh, we also got uh, Jordan Montgomery from the Cardinals with a reliever. I can't remember who the reliever is. Um, that was a good deal. Of course, uh, the Angels picked up some help too. But um, ever since the trade deadline, I think they haven't won a game. So uh, right. who knows what's going to happen with uh, Shohei Otani because I think he's a free agent after this season. And so um, They did trade him, though. <laughs> no, they didn't, and they had the opportunity. And so that may come back to really bite them in the butt, especially if he doesn't sign with them in the offseason. Um, basically, because they gave away any, they gave away basically the only things they had of value in the farm system, they gave away to the Chicago White Sox in trade, and now they're performing terrible. So Shohei Otani ends up signing with another team. They have no farm system. They don't have Shohei. Basically, all they've got is Mike Trout, and that's it. Right. And so you know, it, it's. I, I feel for Angels fans. I feel like they've kind of mismanaged the resources and everything. I think if it would have been me, I probably would have traded Shohei. And I hate to say that, but their farm system needs a lot of help. So, and the only way to get that farm system help is to trade, trade guys who are who are at you know who are, have expiring contracts. And Shohei has an expiring contract, so you know. But uh, Mr. Dwayne says Reds were doing, we're doing good. Uh, our, Reds were doing now not so much. So I guess yeah, they start. They got really hot there for a while. Oh yeah, and now they kind of taper off, haven't they? Yeah, but they may come back. I mean, it seems like they're a streaky team anyway. So I mean, we may Long see that. Season. Yeah, um, Atlanta still looks like really good. good the Astros uh, are, are right on our heels, which makes me nervous. Um, you know, uh, man, the Rays look like they're world beaters again. They were slumping there for a while. Who would have thought the freaking Orioles would be the best team in baseball? I mean, golly, that right. is the biggest surprise of them all. The Dodgers, of course, are still good. You can't get around that. So Dodgers and Braves in the National League are still looking good. I mean, uh, it's going to be really fun going down the stretch with this. It is. I, there, I can't – I wouldn't bet money on anybody right now. Absolutely. There are too many good teams on both sides of the coin. And uh, the American League is going to be a lot of fun. I can tell you that. And us and the Astros is going to be it's going to be contentious. I can tell you that too. Yeah. So um, looking forward to it. Tim, NFL training camp has started, and so do you have any thoughts about NFL training camp or anything that's uh, that's uh, transpired since they've been there? Well, you know, it's always uh, 
there's always a lot of hope, but there's always a lot of hype. And so I don't get too excited uh, anytime. It'd be fun to see. Uh, is tonight the first game? Yeah, I think the Hall of Fame game. Is that the Hall of Fame game tonight? Yeah, I think it's tonight. Yeah, so, first, first preseason. First preseason game. Uh, so, you know, always get excited even to watch uh, some of the players and things that might not make it, but it still makes it exciting to actually watch some uh, football, football, you know. Yeah, I mean, I'm not big on I'm not big on the preseason stuff, but I'll watch it from time to time. You know, I mean, I'm. Oh yeah. You know, I'm not the guy who's gonna sit there and just watch a whole preseason game. Of course, we we went to a preseason game the year the AT and T opened. That was fun. I remember that. So. Yeah, it was. But um, yeah, I mean, we're not much not much on the NFL pre preseason, but there's been some training camp developments and things for teams and stuff. Uh, I'm not watching Hard Knocks with the Jets this year. Are you watching that? No, I, I might have watched one episode. That's just it. That's too much else to watch right now. I hear you. So, uh, yeah, so we'll see. Oh, no, um, Robbie J says the Hall of Fame game was last week, Tim. So I can't keep up with these things. Oh. Yeah. Well, dang, I missed. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah, so um, yeah, so that's already passed. But, yeah, we're going to get more NFL preseason coming up. But preseason doesn't mean anything. Right. You know, it's, it's, just, it's, it's more pointless than spring training to me so. <laughs> right. but anyway we'll we'll see once the season starts up i know a lot of people are excited about college football too tim are you excited about any developments in college football yeah we'll see you know i don't uh, my you know my team is definitely should be better than they were last year but um that's not saying a lot you know they had a lot of improve needed a lot to improve a lot on last year and new coaches and new everything i'd be interested to see how Deion sanders does in colorado uh you know and how he's you know, he, uh, he he gained a lot of players, but he lost a lot of players. So, it's going to be it's going to be it should be a good year. I can't think of any team that's an early they're going to be dominant yet. I think it'll be pretty. Uh, Alabama and everybody's always really good, but they they've been proven that there's other teams that have really come college. Call I like to watch college sometimes more than the pros. Uh, Alan says roll tide, so I guess so we know who he's going for. Uh, Tim, did you hear that it's no longer the Red River Rivalry? No, I did not. It is now the Red River Showdown. Showdown, okay. Well, what? why the change? Don't ask me. <laughs> uh, uh, it's just me and Tim, obviously Tim being an Oklahoma fan, and I'm a big Texas fan, uh... Me and Tim always usually do a little, uh, we'll watch the game together sometimes. Sometimes we'll just text each other back and forth. Sometimes we'll have a friendly wager on it. But uh, me and Tim typically uh, typically get together for the Red River Showdown every year since that's both of our teams in college football going head-to-head. So, uh, But, uh, yeah, I guess we'll see. It's no different, I don't think. So, I mean, they, they just took out the triple R. Now it's double RS, I guess. So. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so we'll see how Texas does and Oklahoma and uh, Alabama and all the other teams. But, uh, you know, I don't know. You never know. Uh, college football is such a strange sport. It's so random. You I never know who's going to be win. the Texas starting quarterback this year with uh, Manning coming up and everybody's going to want to watch him play. Right. So it'll, it'll be interesting. Uh, Alan says, I'll be at the Alabama-Texas game on September 9th. There you go. So oh, nice. I will have to root against you, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. So, Okay, Tim, uh, let's go ahead and move on to our movie and TV talk for, for this uh, month. And so uh, why don't you go ahead and give us some TV shows, some movies that you've been watching. Let us know what you like. Well, you know, it's kind of like this month. Uh, I have watched quite a few things. Uh, but one thing, it, uh, I finished up uh, Ted Lasso. And I, I must say, Jonathan, I think that could be possibly the best show ever written. The ever, I mean, there's it and Seinfeld and maybe a few others that, just far as the writing, uh, that was a great show. Good recommendation. I finally got into it and then I couldn't stop watching it. Uh, so I did finish that. But I, I started since I was on Apple TV anyway. I started seeing what else there was to watch, and I ran across a show that caught my attention called Servant. Now, you haven't watched this, have you? No, yeah, you were telling it, me about it, I think, last night. Um, M. Yeah, M. Night, Night Shyamalan, Night right? Shyamalan. Yeah, and so if you like his movies, like The Sixth Sense, Signs, Unbreakable, uh, the, the newest one was, what's it called, Cabin in the Woods, yeah. or Knock on the Cabin Door, or something like that. Uh, those, If you like kind of the Alfred Hitchcock style with a twist at the end, then you would like this show. And it's definitely, if nothing else, I tell everybody, watch the first episode. 
if you like the first episode, you'll love the show. If you think that's weird and strange, you probably won't like the, the next four seasons that it has. Um, and it's one of those where it about loses your attention and then it picks back up. And then it kind of goes up and down a little bit. But I thought it had a decent ending and it was uh, pretty much ended. There may be a spinoff or something, but four seasons, it's a lot of episodes to watch. So Servant on Apple TV, right? Yes, servant. Okay. Okay, well, I might have to check it out. I do like I do like his movies typically. What else do you got for us? Well, that's pretty much because I watched. I well, they had four seasons, and I just kept watching every night. And my wife liked it, so we were both kind of into it. Uh, there, if I think about it hard enough, I'm probably going to think, "Gosh, we went to the movies, and I can't even remember what we saw." It's like it. This whole month has been so busy. Um, just going and, and everything. But those were a couple that I wanted to highlight. Okay, well, I can go ahead and talk about, I guess, what I've been watching then. Um, I have two that are on the outline, Tim, that I sent you. Um, w- one of them is on Apple TV, and that is The After Party. So The After Party um, had a season one on Apple TV, and it The After Party is a murder mystery that's um, produced by um, the two guys who do the Lego movie and uh, and, across, and the Spider-Verse movies. Um Oh, what are their names? I can't think of them at the moment. Uh, <clears throat> but it, it's really good. It's basically, a, like I said, a murder mystery. So what happens is somebody is murdered, and then every episode you get to see a different point of view of what happened. So like each character gets their own episode to tell their point of view of how the person was murdered. And that, and then at the, the final episode of the season shows you basically how it actually went down. And that's the after party. And so season two is out right now. We went through the first episode, but we're probably going to be continuing on with the rest of the episodes um so we we've been watching that i've been watching the summer i turned pretty with my wife on on prime video um and i think that's got two more episodes in this season and it's very teen drama and teen angst ish and um it's fine for me to watch for my wife if i was just watching it by myself i don't know if i would you know but if you like teen if you like teen drama stuff i mean the whole drama is that these teens have this beach house that they always go to and they're you know they're um (laughs) their their family owns the beach house but now they're losing the beach house and so now they're trying to figure out how they can keep this beach house so that is that is really high stakes drama right so all right and um let's see just trying to think um i told tim about hello tomorrow which is on apple tv and it's Uh a a new series where it kind of takes place in a 1950s-esque aesthetic but with modern technology to a certain extent and it's about a guy who sells condos on the moon and him reconnecting with his son and i don't want to give too much away about that one because i think the less you know the better so I will just leave it at that. But I do. Hello Tomorrow is really good. After Party is really good. Um, what was the one I said before that, Tim? That one's really good. And mm-hmm. I, last night we just watched the first episode of season three of Only Murders in the Building oh, uh, with okay. Steve Martin and uh, Martin Short. And this season has Meryl Streep and Paul Rudd in it. So wow. um, first episode's amazing. So uh, make sure you're checking out Only Murders in the Building as well. Uh, I finished up Secret Invasion with Samuel L. Jackson as Nick Fury on Disney+. Plus. It, Unless you're just a diehard Marvel fan, it is not worth your time. I'll leave it at that. Okay. So if you are a diehard Marvel fan, it's worth your time. But otherwise, skip it. Um, Tim, I watched Bet- Betrayal, The Perfect Husband on Hulu. Have you seen this? No. Okay, so it is about a lady that has this guy that she was really close with in high school and then they reconnect about 20 or 30 years later they meet and they get married but basically the whole time they're married he's hooking up with everybody and everyone around her all of her friends behind her back hooking up with her friends hooking up he's a high school teacher he's hooking up with students like literally hooking up with everybody and the only way he got caught was that he hooked up with a student and the student you know um accused him and he's in jail now Okay. But he was literally doing this all behind her back. Uh, I think I saw the previews to it. It is crazy. And it's based on a podcast. But it is nuts. And I watched the whole thing and I'm just like, I I think to myself, how could you not know? But he disguised it really well. He'd go on work trips and he would hook up with women. And then when she was out of town, he would hook up with, with women. You know, at their house. Wow. This dude, this dude has some mental issues, so. But uh, he's in jail now, which is where he probably needs to be. So, uh, you know, but it, it is it is a fascinating story, yeah. Tim, so. 
Johnson, I did watch a documentary, and I, if did you tell me about it, or have you seen it, called the story of Wham? Yes, I told you about that one. Yes. What'd you that think? That was actually really, way more interesting than I thought. I liked it. It is really good. And the thing is, it stops when Wham! stops. It doesn't go on to George Michael's career. But I was listening to uh, one of my podcasts, and the guy was like, "You can." they have a whole documentary on George Michael that you need I to check out after too. that one. And so I have not watched that one, but the Wham! one was really great. And like I said, um, who was his, uh, who was George Michael's guy? Um, Alan, was that his name? No, that doesn't sound right. What's his name? I can't think the of The other guy. The other guy in Wham! <laughs> That's funny. That's yeah, funny. exactly. We sure. Yeah, I mean, after watching, it's been a while since I watched watched the documentary. Now, Me too. but the thing about him is, he was one of the most humble people you'll ever meet. Yeah, and very talented. And very talented in his own right. And and the thing about it is, is that he could have been very jealous of George Michael. And I think I talked about this when we were talking about it last time. He could have been very jealous of that. He could have said, "No, we're sticking together." He could have done a lot of stuff, but he he kind of stepped aside so so George Michael could have his career. And that takes that you have to be humble. To do that, you know what I'm saying? You got to say, you know what? You're going in a different direction. You're better than me, and so Andrew, Andrew Ridgely. That's it, Andrew Ridgely. Thank you. And so, you know, it takes a lot to say, you know, you're you're better. You're going to go places I can't follow. And so, right. why don't we just break up and you can go to your solo career? And I mean, like I said, so props to Andrew Ridgely. He handled it fantastically. So, and that documentary is really good. It's on Netflix, and you need to watch it. So, uh, what else, Tim? Um, I'm trying to think. I did see Knock on the Cabin Door, okay. which is the, the newest movie by M. Night Shyamalan. Right. And uh, have you watched it, Jonathan? I have not. Okay. It's, it's got a good twist on the end, too, and it's just a movie, so it's about an hour and a half long. Okay. I may have to give it a watch. Um, Movie-wise, I saw The Flash on demand when it came out, So, um, and I liked it a lot. Um, okay. Have you seen it? No, I haven't. Lots of Michael Keaton Batman. Okay. So, uh, I mean, if you're a Michael Keaton Batman fan, you got to watch it. Must watch. And then I also okay. watched The Outlaws on Netflix that had um, Pierce Brosnan and Adam Devine. Oh, I want to see that. It's you liked it? It's kind of stupid. It could have <laughs> okay. been a lot better. Uh, so, I mean, it, it would be a straight up four or five for me. Uh, so you can skip it if you want, but if you're looking for something dumb that just is going to keep your attention for a little bit, yeah, you know it's worth it. But okay, you're better off rewatching like a TV show you used to like or something, or watch The Flash. Just do that. So, um, the last thing I want to mention though is the Secrets of Hillsong documentary on Hulu. I saw that. Okay, you've seen this. I have not seen it, but I saw the previews and stuff. So I watched one Hillsong documentary, and it was okay. I, I forget what it, I think it may have been on Peacock or something. But this one on Hulu is great. It's way better. And it talks about all the problems that were happening in Hillsong Church. And it interviews the guy who was the head pastor at the New York location, which was the one that got all the, you know, got all the, um, you know, kind of like all of the buzz and stuff. When it really started yeah. getting big, and I forget his name at the moment, his wife. But you know, the whole the whole thing kind of started to collapse when he got caught cheating on his wife with their nanny. Okay. And but they interview him and his wife in the documentary, which the other one did not. And I thought that that really added a lot to the story because they got to tell their story behind it. But that church was messed up, and I'm not right saying on. all churches aren't messed up. Look, churches are made of imperfect people. Okay, uh, I was right. watching a pastor last night, and he said that, um, you know why your church isn't perfect? Because you're there. Because you're there, That's yeah. what he said, and it's true. <laughs> okay, so churches are not perfect, and Hillsong was far from it. They had a lot of issues. But um, but they had more issues than just not perfect people. They had they had things being covered up and other, other things. There were multiple problems there. And so, I mean... I, I'm familiar with the Hillsong brand probably more for the music than anything. Okay, yeah, I think most too. people are. But the church itself, I mean, there were good things about the church, and there are still good things about the church, but there were some bad things about the church, too, and that's what the documentary goes into. And I'm I'm always fascinated in this. Um, Tim, they have this term now that's called church hurt. Have you heard this before? So yeah. church hurt is a term that means I went to church and I had a bad experience, maybe with the people or with something there, and so now I'm church hurt. I'm never going back to another church because I don't. the church hurt me. 
Okay, and and yeah. so that's what the that's what this documentary shows. It shows all these people who are church hurt by Hillsong, and that's what I found fascinating. And they interviewed some of them, and uh, and and the interesting thing was like there were a lot of people who trained to be pastors at Hillsong and everything. That once Hillsong kind of went under, they just left church life completely and then there was this homosexual guy that was on there and after Hillsong went down he found a small church in New York that accepted accepted him as he was and kept going to that church so like it was interesting that all these all these people who were staying to be pastors and stuff they totally left the church completely and then this guy who was homosexual that wasn't accepted at Hillsong found an accepting church and went there I just wow. I just found that super fascinating you know so, but I don't want to give away uh-huh. the whole documentary, but I think it is, if you're interested in that subject, I think it's something worth watching. And there's definitely, there were definitely problems in Hillsong. And Hillsong was basically, instead of, I feel like churches should be open and saying, look, come as you are, your sin is okay here. Oh, not okay, but your sin, you're, if you're a sinner, that's okay, right? Like, that's how a church should be. Yeah. With Hillsong, it was like, um, come as you are, and if you're a sinner, just make sure you hide that. <laughs> that's a, you know that was kind of their thing it was don't tell right anybody. exactly don't tell anybody you know because if you tell somebody we're going to shame you and, yeah keep it right to exactly it's like no i mean you know that's not how it should work so their thing yeah their thing was like just keep it to yourself don't tell us because if you tell us we're going to make we're going to shame you to death so i mean that was kind of their thing so it's fascinating and if you're interested in that i think you should watch it but um the one on hulu okay. is way better than the other one i watched on peacock i think it was so the hulu one is worth watching the other one is not so but okay, yeah, that. watch the secrets of Hillsong, and it goes into it goes into all the stuff and everything, and how Hillsong was at its peak, and then how it fell, and all that kind of stuff. And it's still around now. You can there are still Hillsong churches, but um, the leadership has had a dramatic turnover. Most of the people who were in who are in leadership at that time are gone, and a lot of the congregations now have dwindled since then. So very wow. interesting. But um, anyway. Yeah, because I mean, yeah, I mean, look, sinners are welcome in church. You're supposed to be. We're all sinners, right? I mean, we all sin, sing, but it's different when it's like, you know, hey, you know, come here. We know you're a sinner. That's okay, you know, and uh, just you know, repent and things, and and you know, we'll be fine. Versus like, hey, we're not going to talk about sin. We want you to cover up as much of your sin as possible. You know, that's it's right. a different philosophy. So, um, but anyway, so uh, I think that's it for all the stuff I've been watching. I I I, I feel like there were oh, I watched the league. That was about okay. the Negro Baseball League. Oh, yeah. That sounds it was good. good. I mean, just all the stuff that it went through. Basically, it, the the documentary covers from the beginning when it was formed and then all the way to the end. And um, all the way to Jackie Robinson, basically. And, I mean, Jet, look, integration of baseball was amazing. But the documentary will tell you that the problem was is once integration happened, what happened to the Negro League? It kind of died off, right? right? Because it wasn't needed anymore. (laughs) So that's kind of the end of the Negro Leagues was when when integration happened in baseball. And we had, you know, we had blacks and whites playing baseball together in Major League Baseball. The Negro Leagues basically lost all their good players because they were all going to Major League Baseball. And so at that point is when the... And the owners of the Negro Leagues really thought that the... Major League Baseball owners would buy out the contracts of the Negro League players so they could continue to support, kind of like they would become a farm system. But the MLB right. the MLB owners didn't do that. They just poached their players and give them nothing back. So, yeah. I mean, <laughs> so what ended up happening was Negro League Baseball ended up going going away completely. So, um, but it is a fascinating watch. Highly recommend it. Uh, I think it's on demand, so you have to get it on demand. I watched it on the plane. But um, I think it's on demand, but it's called The League, and it's all about the Negro Leagues. And, um, I, Tim, it's just a fascinating time period for me, and it's a great watch. If you love baseball, that's a, that's a huge part of baseball is what you have to remember. And there were players who played in the Negro Leagues that never got to see MLB because they weren't in their prime and that were great players. And that's something we should always, always remember is that there were great players in the Negro Leagues that never made it to Major League Baseball, and that's sad. You know, we got to see some of them, like Satchel Page. We got to see some of the guys. Obviously, yeah. um, you know, Brooks right, exactly. We got to we got to yeah. see some of them, but we did not get to see. Uh, there were a lot of great players that just never made it. And they, you know, the way they played baseball was different from the ways white guys were playing baseball during that time. You know, and they played a more fun, active game. And whereas with um, Major League Baseball at the time, it was all about Babe Ruth and hitting the home run. It wasn't about stealing bases and trying to score any way you can and sacrifices and stuff like that. You know, but the Negro Leagues, a lot of the, those concepts that we have today of stealing bases and sacrifice bunts and stuff like that came from that style of baseball. And that's something we have to remember if you're a fan of the game. So, 
But anyway, Tim, that's a good one Great. you should watch too. But anyway. Okay. okay, well, I think I'm done. You got anything else for us, Tim? No, I need to get going. I've still got a little more work to do. I was about to say, it's just, uh, it's 6 o'clock there, right? You still got lots of time. Yeah, I got to go eat dinner and finish up. Okay, well, we wish you safe travels on your way back here to Texas, and we hope that you have a great time on the uh, in California while you're there. Uh, say say hi to everybody there for us. Hopefully, uh, hopefully they're all pretty friendly to you. So, hey, tell them, hey, I'm a transplant from Texas for a little bit. I know you guys are all coming our way, but, you know, sometimes we come your way. So. Right. <laughs> uh, but uh, there's, there, I don't know if you saw the, the car in Fort Worth that had a little sticker on the back that said, um, I think I think it said, don't worry, just passing through, and it had a California plate on it. You uh-huh. know, so. But seriously, we've had a lot of California transplants, but we welcome all you guys. You guys are always welcome here in Texas. So, But uh, anyway, Tim, we hope you have a good time there. Safe travels back, my friend, and we hope to connect with you next month for the next live show, hopefully before, um, but uh, we'll just see how the schedule allows. So, But anyway, guys, we hope that all of you guys who are watching have a great rest of your month. Have a great uh, August, and Tim, we'll be back here in September for the next 79 of the live show, and that is going to be, and I can't even bring up my calendar. Do you know what that is? No, I'll see. I got a calendar right in front of me. The The 7th? Yeah, the 7th. Here in about four weeks on September 7th, we'll be back with another live show, and hopefully uh, we'll see you then. So take care, everybody. Have a good night. Get lots of rest. Tim, safe travels. We'll see you back here in Texas soon. Thank you, John. Bye, guys. Bye.